Buccaneers against the Dallas Cowboys. We are live at Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas, as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Dallas Cowboys resume this NFL season. And we want to remind you as we take a look at the NFC standings, forget about the divisions. It is conference all the way, and eight of these teams, right now it would include Dallas, but not Tampa Bay, would be eligible for the tournament starting January 8th and 9th for the Super Bowl. And that's the story as we welcome you, and we're all glad to be back, everyone. Welcome back to Texas Stadium. I'm Dick Stockton, along with Roger Staubach, who I know stayed in good condition during this strike. This is a historic game in many ways because despite all the speculation, no one really knows, coaches, players, observers, what we're going to see out here today. So it's exciting as far as that is concerned. But what are the coaches' approach this week, Rog? Uh, they're mostly uh, similar. McKay and Landry both expressed the idea of conditioning. More time in the classroom, don't overdo it on the field. They feel how you handle the players will have a lot to do with the game, so substitution is critical. Landry looks at this is a two-game schedule since they play on Thanksgiving Day, so substitution is important today. How much was the blowout last year in the playoffs when Dallas destroyed Tampa Bay affect this game? Well, Tampa's still thinking about that, and John McKay mentioned he was worried. His offensive line did not come back in great shape after the strike. They did not pass protect particularly well during the week in practice, so he's worried about pass protection. And there you see John McKay and the Dallas Cowboys have won the toss. You're looking at Ron Fellows to the left and Doug Donnelly to the right. The Cowboys have won the toss and will receive a beautiful afternoon here in Texas. 70 degrees at kickoff as you look at Bill Capice in the orange shirt at Buccaneers and we're underway. It's Fellows at the goal line. And Ron still going. His tackle at the 27-yard line. So taking a look at Dallas's offense familiar. Danny White, Tony Dorsett, Ron Springs, Drew Pearson, and Tony Hill are the wide receivers. Tight end Doug Cosby in the offensive line. Donovan, Howard Richards, Rafferty Peterson, and Jim Cooper. First and 10 at the 29-yard line. We cannot judge what the crowd is going to be because this is the first time in history the Cowboys have started at this early time. It is noon in Dallas. Danny White, fourth ranked in the NFC, first and ten. Keep in mind, the Cowboys play a multiple offense, timing important. And Dorsett carries, slices past the 30 and gets to the 32. And that's what he was looking for, that first hit. The Tampa Bay defense, rated highly yardage-wise so far this year. Stalls, David Logan, the nose tackle, and Leroy Selman. The linebackers, Andy Hawkins, Cecil Johnson, Scott Brantley, and the superb Hugh Green. And in the secondary, Thomas, Mike Washington, Neil Colsey, and Cedric Brown. Second and seven. Cosby and Dupree are both in his twin tight ends. Ron Springs. Out of the game, Dorsett the lone setback. Second and seven. And here is Dorsett off the right side. Maybe a yard on the play. The tackle is made by the inside linebacker, Scott Brantley. Tampa Bay has played well defensively. It's the offense that have caused them a lot of trouble this year. Too many turnovers. So it'll be third and five. John Holt has come in as a nickel back. Five defensive backs in there for Tampa Bay. They bring in Booker Reese as well on most passing situations, but not here. Wide receivers Butch Johnson and Drew Pearson split to the left. Third and five at the 34. And White has a lot of protection. And the pass is intercepted by Tampa Bay. Cedric Brown. Intercepts a Danny White pass, and that's the first interception he has thrown against Tampa Bay in four games. Cedric Brown, number 34, is laying back in the zone. Danny thinks it's a zone, but he starts up immediately and gambles that Johnson doesn't go deep. Steps in front of Butch Johnson, number 86. Cedric Brown has intercepted seven passes in the last eight games. He's the big play guy on defense for Tampa Bay, and he timed that interception perfectly. So Tampa Bay with a golden chance here at the 37-yard line of Dallas. Just the opening minutes here at Texas Stadium, and Doug Williams the quarterback, and he is a good, durable quarterback indeed. Fullback James Wilder gets maybe two off the right side, 
as we take a look at the offense for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Doug Williams is the quarterback, James Wilder and James Owens, the speedster, the tailback, Gordon Jones and Kevin House, the wide receivers, Jimmy Giles, outstanding tight end, Dave Revis, the veteran, is starting, George Yarno starting at the left side, Steve Wilson, the center, Greg Roberts and Charlie Hanna make up the other two on the right. Second and eight at the 35 of the Cowboys. Dallas is 3-0 against Tampa Bay. This time it's Wilder off the right side, still going inside the 20-yard line. And a first down, Harvey Martin pursuing on the play, and they get to the 16. So this crowd, which cheered the Cowboys when they came out, are silent right now after the 19-yard pickup. We talked to both coaches, uh, Dick, and they both said that the passing game was going to be the most important aspect of the offense today, but here we see him testing the run. They're still going to test that run, not take chances on interceptions or bad plays in the passing game. P Dallas threw the one interception, but they came out running. Tampa Bay's running. They're running well right now. James Wilder, who's a good receiver out of the backfield, and a good block, by the way, by Charlie Hatt on that last play. First and 10 at the 16 now. And here's James Owens. Owens gets to the 11, a five-yard pickup. Guy Brown, the outside linebacker, makes the stop. Two tall Jones, John Dutton, Randy White, and Harvey Martin, the front four for the Cowboys. Mike Hegman, Bob Bruning, and Guy Brown, who this year is replacing Dee Dee Lewis. Everson Walls, Dennis Thurman, Benny Barnes taking Charlie Waters' place at the strong safety, and Michael Downs, the free safety. Second and five at the 11. The Buccaneers alternate the wide receivers, Gordon Jones and Theo Bell, and Bell is in there now. He's split to the left. Wilder, trying to find some room off the left, gets maybe two, and that's all, if he got that much. Mike Hickman, the left linebacker, makes the tackle. Tampa Bay 0-2 on the year. They lost to the Cowboys two years ago in a tough 28-17 loss, a far cry from last year's 38-0 romp. And in that game, Doug Williams said, I might have had a lot of pride going in this one to take the punishment that I had to take in that game. Yeah, Doug was concerned about that. And this drive is important to Tampa Bay. Last year in that playoff game, it was only 10 to nothing at halftime. Dallas went ahead at the start of the second half, 17 to nothing. That defensive line can tee off and they know Tampa has to th throw the football. Fumble, but... and Doug Williams trying to hold on to it. And that was a problem against the Washington Redskins in the rain when Doug Williams just couldn't hold on to the snap from Steve Wilson. There were four of those fumbles. Fortunately, Tampa Bay maintains possession. That's a possible four-point spread right there. Tampa had a chance for the first down. Now they're going to kick the field goal. So it's fourth down and a field goal attempt. Bill Capice, who is one for three this year, the one he made was 51 yards, and they were all long attempts. Larry Spider, the punter, will hold. It'll be a 26-yard attempt. And this kick is perfect. So following the interception by Cedric Brown, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers draw first blood on a field goal by Bill Capice. And with nearly five minutes gone by in the first quarter, the Bucs lead the Cowboys three to nothing. So that's the drive and a quick one. Tampa Bay fumbling on the attempt on third down. And so the Buccaneers lead it three to nothing and Bill Capice, who kicked the field goal, will be kicking off. Once again, Ron Fellows, number 27 to the left and Doug Donnelly, 83, split to the right. Three to nothing, Tampa Bay and a short kick and Fellows will feel this at the five. Fellows from the University of Missouri with good speed brings it just about back to where the Cowboys had it the first time to the 28-yard line. A short kick by Capice. So the Cowboys will go on offense first and 10. Tackle was made by Jim Obradovich, the backup tight end. So here's Danny White again. He said the first day of practice this week, it looked like 14 men on defense. He says everything was moving so fast. That's what he said. Vision was a bit of a problem just orienting himself back to the the secondary, the, what people were doing. And again, he didn't anticipate Cedric Brown the first time. He thought he was in a deep zone, and really he was gambling and intercepted that pass. So Danny's got to get uh, with it again like everybody else. Tom Landry said there'll be a lot more passing than running, and one pass resulted in a, a crucial interception. Danny White this time fires, and it's complete to Tony Hill. And Tony Hill is a first down at midfield. The big play receiver for the Cowboys, and they pick up a chunk of yardage now. Now what's important here about Dallas and what Danny White told us, 
were the plays coming in from Tom Landry and the amount of time to get the play underway. Here's Hill again. Here's Tony Hill. Uh, this is off a play action pass. Tampa Bay's linebackers let, like to get back deep at the help. The uh, secondary is really back deep, but the linebackers usually help in that area. But the play action held the linebackers and White hit Hill. Andy Hawkins and Tom, Norris Thomas make the stop after 21-yard pickup on first down. Danny White under pressure. He gets the ball off and throws it away, and a penalty marker is down. That was David Logan, the nose tackle, and he's going to be called for roughing the passer. That's going to be a throwaway. Oh, no, I'm think sorry. That's going to be called for intentionally grounding. Throwing, I'm sorry. Throwing the ball away. Even though he did uh, hit the passer, but it wasn't roughing the passer, and they yeah. caught Danny for trying to throw the ball in the first row. And Doug Williams had that called on him in the playoff last year, so Tampa Bay giving Dallas a little of their own medicine in this series here. And that's a loss of down as well as yardage. So that's a costly penalty. You know, the interesting thing about the passing game is that it's a positive thing after the strike, except for protection. Your protection takes time to get oriented. Your receivers and quarterbacks have been working out, but the protection is a question mark. Intentionally grounding of the football, number 11. It has been refused. The ball is put in play where the foul occurred. Second down. Re referee evidently blew the whistle and Danny was trapped and they uh, went ahead and declined the penalty. It'll be second down and 24 at the 35 yard line. Chuck Heberling is the referee of this crew working today's game. Tony Hill is split to the left. And here's Tony Dorsett. Dorsett with a block from Howard Richards gets to the 40 yard line. It'll be third and about 10 for the Cowboys. The left defensive end, Dave Stalls, makes the tackle on the play. There you're looking at the 30-second clock, the play coming in. What does Danny White want on the clock when he gets to the line? Well, he wants to have the play at least 22 seconds to go, so he's in pretty good shape there. I give him enough time to call the play, get up the line of scrimmage. He likes to have about 8 to 10 seconds once he gets up the line of scrimmage, so he's running a little bit late here and he's going to have a problem on this play. And there he said, when I come to the line and I have less than eight seconds, forget about all of the motion and any of the clever things the Cowboys do. Yeah. And they didn't get that. Oh, there's a penalty marker down. That was too long there. Yeah, the so, the game. so they didn't get it. So alertly, and one of the real interesting things here is uh, Tom Landry has got to get back into the rhythm too, Dick. And he's got to get back and get those plays in, get them in from the sidelines, because they got extra people coming in. And of course, don't put pressure on the quarterback having to worry about the time. Delay of the game, number 11, third down. It's still very early, of course, with 8.30 remaining in the first period, but it's been the Dallas Cowboys who have been tentative and making the early mistakes here instead of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So Tom Landry now, as you look at the 30-second clock, now they have the play, and they shouldn't have a problem on this down. They're breaking the huddle at 15, so they should be in pretty decent shape. You don't want to get up the line of scrimmage with anything less than uh, 9 or 10 seconds. Three wide receivers, Drew Pearson, Butch Johnson, and Tony Hill here. Third and 25. And Ron Springs up the middle, makes the catch, and he'll be hit inside the 40, but it takes a few of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and finally Mike Washington brings him down. Leroy Selman also on the play. It'll be fourth down, and it'll be a punting situation. Danny White, who has become an aggressive team leader, but he said his standard for him will be how he leads the Cowboys to the Super Bowl. It'll be fourth and 21 now. John Holt is back for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and Danny, of course, will punt. There's Holt. Cowboys tried out several punters to try to see if they can relieve Danny White from punting. They couldn't find anyone good enough. Good punt by Danny White inside the 15. Penalty marker is down, and Holt is out of bounds at the 20. We have a penalty. Rod Hill made the play. There's Chuck Heberling, a 48-yard punt, but let's wait and see. This is what makes, makes coaches gray, really, that losing that field position. Uh, it's another 10 yards for Tampa Bay right there. They'll be back close to the 10-yard line, and field position is really critical in a football game. And, of course, the specialty teams can control field position. Here they're gonna, it's going to be costly to them. There you see Tom Landry talking with Danny White. 
this is a different circumstance, and this is what we're talking about. We don't know what to expect. Penalty against Tampa Bay. Illegal block of the waist, number 24, on a punt return. First down. That's a rookie mistake, Thomas Morris, although veterans do make that same error. And there's a blocking foul, and so Tampa Bay will have 90 yards to go when we come back with 728 remaining in the first quarter here in Texas. We're back. And it's three to nothing in favor of Tampa Bay, but let's see if the Dallas Cowboys tee off right here. First and 10 at the 10 yard line for Doug Williams. Remember, Too Tall Jones and Harvey Martin had a picnic last year in the playoffs. They get nothing on the running play. James Owens, who was acquired from the 49ers after being a track star at UCLA. Jerry Eckwood's out for the year. The Rams lead Atlanta 7-0 in the first quarter of their game in Atlanta. The Jets 7-0 over the Baltimore Colts in the first quarter. New Orleans, 1-1 going into this game, have a lead over Kansas City early. Here's where the tight end is really critical to get you out of trouble down here. I think Giles is going to be a big receiver today, especially when you're backed up. You want to hit that tight end. Kevin House is split wide to the right. He is really a big play man for Tampa Bay. Doug Williams looking for House. It's overthrown. He was covered by Everson Walls on the play. Doug Williams has thrown touchdown passes in his last seven games, too short of his own team record, which he has done twice. And he is a strong, durable quarterback. He has come under fire, but I think as a former quarterback, you can appreciate what Doug Williams is as a well, Super Bowl. And, it, and you don't want to beat a guy's drum if uh, you don't mean it, but I think Doug Williams is a fine quarterback. He's got a strong arm. He's a bright guy. He's had some uh, people around him. They've grown as a team together. He's made big plays, and I think his future is very bright as an NFL quarterback. Seven defensive backs are in the game. Ron Fellows, Dexter Klinkscale, and Monty Hunter, who's just about big enough to be a linebacker in there for the Cowboys at third and nine. And I think there might have been movement. Penalty marker down. There was. And the pass is complete from Williams to Wilder to the 15. But there was movement. There might have been a Tampa Bay receiver move. But let's wait and see. There's a penalty. 6.39 remaining in the first quarter here at Texas Stadium. The Cowboys trail Tampa Bay 3-0. Big play was an interception by Cedric Brown. Penalty call against Dallas, so that gives the Bucks a life. Harvey Martin apparently went offside. A silhouette of Tom Landry shaking his head. Landry needs two victories or three wins to reach 200, the milestone in the regular season. Offside defense, number 79, third down. So it's still third down. Harvey Martin, the guilty party, and it's third and four instead of third and nine. Don Smerick, number 60, a free agent from Nevada, Reno, in his second year has come into the ball game, as has Anthony Dickerson at linebacker. Third and four, the ball at the 16-yard line for Doug Williams. Here comes a blitz. The pass complete to Wilder. He has a first down for Tampa Bay and out of bounds at the 26-yard line. The tackle made by Dennis Thurman, the right cornerback. I saw Randy White pouring through there. I was saying, I uh, hope this is a screen for Tampa Bay's sake, because he was, he was, in fact, in a screen, you want to hit a player a little bit longer than that. But Randy was right through, and it was a screen, set up well. And, of course, Williams got the pass off to Wilder, and he made the first down. In a game in which short passing could be important, Wilder is really an important weapon for Tampa Bay. He was sixth in the NFC for running backs. He has already caught 10 passes coming into this game. First and 10, six minutes to go. And there's the pitch to Wilder. Wilder can't get outside and terrific pursuit for Dallas by Michael Downs, the free safety who put on some weight and that helped his tackling Good play on Wilder. Gain of two, second and eight, and there's Michael Downs from Rice in his second year. Ian Walls, the two free agents who made it big last year. Next Sunday, the NFL all starts with the NFL today. You see the Green Bay at the Jets, Philadelphia, Washington, St. Louis, Atlanta, New Orleans, San Francisco. Begins 12.30 Eastern, second and eight. At the... At the 28-yard line and almost intercepted by Dennis Thurman on that pass intended for Theo Bell. 
And right now, time for an NFL update. Let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Brent? Dick, the Rams go to the classic Lombardi sweep. Watch the two guards pull out, and here comes number 26. Wendell Totter behind him, a five-yard touchdown. The Rams lead the Falcons by seven. Let's go back now to Dick and Dallas. All right, Brent, the Rams trying to get into that win column. Third and eight now at the 28-yard line for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Two wide receivers to the right, Gerald Carter and Kevin House. Both are solid threats. Wilder, the lone setback. And the quick toss to Bell. Make it Gordon Jones to midfield. And Williams was hit hard. He can take it, but he took quite a hit on that play as Ron Fellows and Michael Downs made the stop on Gordon Jones, the fourth-year man from Pitt. Well, they had two wide receivers to the other side, and Gordon Jones was all by himself over there. Williams got the ball out quick, and well-designed play. as a quick hook, and he beat Fellows. He caught the ball quickly, broke inside for the first down, and it was a uh, good play set up. Dallas was overloaded to these two wide receivers. Single coverage on the weak side, and Williams went to the right receiver, and here's Jones coming off the field. He's... He had an outstanding preseason, and he caught two passes in the first two games of the year. He got knocked in the gut there a little bit, too. First and 10 now at midfield. Tampa Bay looking sharp here in the first period. 4.32 to go. 3 to nothing. the Bucks lead. Pitch to Wilder and a whistle. Too much time. So the second delay of the game call here. Roger, it's very early, and the call is going to be delay of the game, but how would you assess the hitting so far? Well, the uh, intensity is there, and we talked to... Both coaches, Coach Landry specifically, thought the intensity and the, the caliber of play early in the game would be at its best, uh, believe it or not, because fatigue would start setting in later on in the game, and then the intensity might come off, drop off. Delay of the game, offense number 12, first down. Here's the problems with the strike. It's, it's the refinements. It's kind of the, the decorative things that are automatic, uh, getting the play off, and, and just silly mistakes that take place now. We've seen two delay of the games already. First and 15 now at the 45-yard line. Tampa Bay in their own territory. Two wide receivers to the right. They swing it out to Wilder. Wilder with a good cut, trying to get back to the original line of scrimmage and fails to do it. So it'll be second down and about 11. Everson Walls and Michael Downs combined to make the stop. Can Doug Williams take advantage of a Dallas secondary, which may be a little suspect, in your opinion? I think he can if they can get the protection. I think the line of scrimmage, as Doug mentioned to us uh, yesterday, he was concerned about protection. He's not concerned to the point it's going to affect his play, but he wants to get the pass off. He feels he can get House into that secondary, get Giles open, so he needs the protection to do it. He feels he can take advantage of that secondary. Seven defensive backs in the game, second and 11. Under four minutes to go here in the first quarter, and Wilder with a block of yards. Arno gets to the 44-yard line of Dallas. Michael Downs comes up to make the stop again. So George Yarno, the fourth-year man from Washington State, blocking for James Wilder, who is the second-leading rusher for Tampa Bay. The leading rusher on the team is the quarterback. Well, if you're going to scout this Tampa Bay team, you want to emphasize your passing uh, defense and not so much the rush, because Williams is leading rusher. Today, the surprise has been Wilder. He's, ran, he's run well. It's early in the game but they've run the football in Dallas. And they're giving Wilder a breather. Melvin Carver, a free agent rookie, they like a lot from Nevada, Las Vegas. Number 28 is in the game at third and three at the Dallas 43. And there is Carver. He has a first down. And look at that acceleration to the 32. Melvin Carver, who can play both tailback and fullback, and John McKay said we spent 16 million on scouting in the NFL and Carver wasn't well, even You can great. see that middle on your screen. You see Yarno 68, Wilson 50, and Greg Roberts 61. They're cross blocking. They're knocking the people out of the hole right there and doing an excellent job getting into that secondary. But good blocking at the point of attack. Yarno, Wilson, and Roberts really played the game in the middle well and got their cross blocks and good run, good execution. So it's first and 10 at the 32 yard line. The Cowboys maintain possession. Owens and Carver are the setbacks, and James Owens leaps forward to about the 30-yard line. Play made by John Dutton, the left tackle. Doug Williams was sacked four times by Tom Landry's crew last year in the playoff and had four passes intercepted. New Orleans, 10 to nothing now over Kansas City in the first quarter. And I'm sure we're gonna see some surprises in this first game back, and we're seeing one at least in this first quarter. Under two minutes to go. Second and nine at the 31. Doug Williams, he has enough time, and he gets it off to Owens. And a good shoestring tackle prevents 
Owens from getting more yardage. Bob Bruning, the middle linebacker, makes the play on Owens. Otherwise, it might have been a bigger gainer for Tampa Bay. So it'll now be third down and 10 for the Bucks. That was kind of a screen set up to the outside. You saw also out there number 54, Randy White. He didn't go for it like he did the last time. He came flying in on the screen before, and here's Bruning coming off the field. He comes out in passing situations, but White reacted that time and gave Bruning help to the outside. Seven defensive backs in there. Tampa Bay is three for four on third down conversions. They're third and 10 at the 32. In motion, Gerald Carter. Williams up the middle. He's got Jimmy Giles, his tight end, and a first down at the 17-yard line. So one of the big threats on this team ever since they became a solid franchise has been Jimmy Giles, the career reception leader for the Buccaneers. And he's a first down. A, he's a big play guy. He split out to the uh, right side of your screen and to their left side, and Williams is kind of looking at him all the way. He's on young Monty Hunter, the rookie. Beats him man-to-man -man coming across the middle. Finally gets help from Michael Downs. But Jimmy Giles is a big play guy, and he made a big one there. Jimmy Giles, the only Tampa Bay offensive player ever to be in the Pro Bowl. He was in twice, 23 seconds to go, first down. Doug Williams is going up top for Kevin House and overthrows him. Defending on the play was Everson Walls. Second down. Are you surprised at how sharp the Buccaneers are looking in this first quarter? Well, Doug Williams, in the back of his mind, is as happy as can be because he's got a running game going. He's taking that pressure off that front four coming at him, so he can mix up things right now. And uh, I'm surprised that they've rushed as well as they have against Dallas. But uh, the passing game for Tampa Bay will get stronger if they can continue to rush the football because Tampa Bay has a strong passing game. John McKay almost had his bags packed to go to Palm Springs, and he stayed around and it was a good thing because this thing ended and he's in action second and 10 at the 17 yard line wilder good move up the middle to the 10 yard line that may be the last play of the first quarter and the tampa bay offensive line looks a hundred percent different it's like night and day compared to what they played and how they played in the playoffs there you're looking at cincinnati with a three nothing lead over philadelphia in the first quarter and right here that is the end of the first quarter here in Texas Stadium in Irving. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Surprise, Tampa Bay three and Dallas nothing. Here in Texas, Dick Stockton along with Roger Staubach. 3-0 Tampa Bay. How important is this play for the Bucs, Roger? Well, it's the first quarter. They were third and three, exactly in the same position, and Doug Williams fumbled the snap. They need the first down. They need a touchdown. If they get the field goal, they've outplayed Dallas completely so far, but it would only be 6 to nothing. and that uh, psychologically Dallas says, hey, one touchdown, we're back in it. All right, we'll see what happens here. First play of the second quarter. At the 10-yard line, third and three. In motion, Gerald Carter, three wide receivers. Williams in trouble, his pass knocked away by Everson Walls, intended for Carter, the wide receiver. So once again, as Roger pointed out, and well-timed, I might add, Tampa Bay has dominated Dallas. They've run off 21 plays to seven for the Cowboys. They've averaged more than five and a half yards per rush, and Everson Walls, yeah. who has had the only Dallas interception this year, that against the Cardinals, has broken up a play, and Tampa Bay is going to have to try to settle for three again. Yeah, Dennis Thurman was shaking Ever Everson Walls' hand, but Ed Jones put the pressure on Williams. The ball was a little bit thrown behind the receiver. 28-yard attempt. Capiz with Swider holding, and this kick is good. But Tampa Bay has totally dominated this game so far, but they only have a 6-0 lead to show for it. And we'll be back here in Texas in a moment. A solid drive by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They went 80 yards in 16 plays, but they could only manage a field goal by that man, Bill Capiz. But it's still 6 to nothing, Tampa Bay, and they really look sharp so far in the game. Although the Cowboys, of course, with the ability to explode at any time. Seven seconds gone by in this second quarter, and Ron Fellows at the goal line. Fellows with good speed at the 25, and stopped short of the 30-yard line. The tackle made by Thomas Morris, 
a rookie defensive back for the Buccaneers. So they have a Norris Thomas and a Thomas Morris. And we'll take another break right now. Two Bill Capice field goals, and we'll see what Dallas does when they come back. So the Orange Bowl berth at stake in the game Friday beginning at 2.30 Eastern and the great traditional rivalry, rivalry Saturday at 3.30 Eastern. Holiday football on CBS, NCAA variety. The Dallas Cowboys have started all three of their drives on their own 29-yard line. Doug Cosby and Billy Joe Dupree are both in at tight end. Dorsett the setback at the 29. White swings it to Dorsett, and he's tackled well behind the line of scrimmage by Scott Brantley, number 52, who suffered a head injury. He was a promising performer out of Florida, and he had to go to several doctors who gave the okay for him to play professional football. He has been outstanding on pass coverage. He beat out Richard Wood for that right inside linebacker spot this year. Yeah, the Dallas really liked him also, Dick. They, they tested him. The doctors said that he should be in good shape. They were going to draft him, but they didn't have a draft of the third round that year. And Tampa Bay picked him up, and it was a good choice. Loss of five on the play, second and 15, back of the 24 now. And on the draw play, Dorsett has no room to go, and he gets to the 26-yard line. It's an aggressive, hard-hitting defense. And now Tom let's take a look at the 30-second clock. Butch Johnson brings in the play from Tom Landry. He's coming in right now. We got, uh, of course, the clock. The referee are just now winding the clock, so they'll be in good shape in this series. He got the book play in there in plenty of time, but at Tampa Bay, it looks like there's a crack, and all of a sudden, those orange jerseys are right there. They're... They give some ground, but they pursue very quickly in their hard-hitting defense. And Tony Dorsett limping off the field, and he has been replaced in the starting lineup. Ron Springs is in there now, and they go to the spread, third and 13 at the 26. Pressure on Danny White, and his pass is caught. Butch Johnson. He'll Butch Johnson makes the reception at the 45-yard line. Cecil Johnson and Cedric Brown combine to make the stop. So Butch Johnson, who has been a featured television reporter here in Dallas during the strike, makes a big play. Danny White, it looked like the ball was uh, might have been tipped. There's Logan putting a lot of pressure up the middle, and the ball's thrown right, dropped right in the well right there. Butch Johnson is in that crease in the zone. Everybody's around. There's Holt, number 21. Uh, Cedric Brown is around but it was a good completion. Big Gainer, first and 10 at the 46. 20 yard pickup, diving forward is Ron Springs. He's short of midfield, pickup of close to three yards and Dave Stalls makes the tackle for Tampa Bay. They have not, as you look at the 30 second clock with Billy Joe Dupree bringing in the play and not made things happen on defense as they did last year when they forced turnovers. Cedric Brown did in the first quarter of this game and it resulted in a field goal for Tampa Bay. Yardage-wise, the Bucks rank amongst the best in the league. Second and seven at the 49. Springs and Timmy Newsom both in the lineup. Newsom number 30, seeing his first action. He's the tailback. And here's Timmy Newsom. Newsom just gets to midfield and into Tampa Bay territory. David Logan, the nose tackle, makes the stop. Tony Dorsett being treated on the sideline. He needs 125 yards a game to reach 1,000 for the sixth straight year, Roger. That's the durable Tony Dorsett also. He's, he isn't hurt uh, very often, and you can speculate, is it the layoff or is it just an injury that comes up in a football game? But it looks like it's in that, of course, that foot area there, the instep or the arch on the uh, right foot. But he's out, and he'll be out for a while. So three wide receivers on the spread, third and five at the Tampa Bay 49. In motion, Drew Pearson. And that's all. Danny White is hit by Dave Stalls, the sixth-year veteran from northern Colorado. The old Dallas Cowboy. So Stalls, and this is an aroused Tampa Bay defense. No question about it. They lead in the game. Well, you got to credit that to the secondary of Tampa Bay. Watch Danny White, number 11, back there. He's looking into that secondary. Everybody's dropped off, just a three-man rush, and... He's looking downfield plenty of time. He just can't find a receiver. Good per good coverage, and then Stalls breaks loose late off of Cooper's block and traps uh, a Cowboy. And Stalls, of course, was the old former Dallas Cowboy. He's doing, doing a good job for uh, Tampa Bay now. 
So Stalls makes a big play, and Holt is deep. Danny White will punt from the 20. John Holt. And the clock expires again. And now you hear some boots. There was a smattering of boos when the Cowboys first came out for practice. They had a lot of cheers when the team was individually introduced before the game. And now they really heard boos, and you would have heard this in any game, whether there was a strike or not. Delay yeah, uh, the game, offense number 11, fourth down. They don't like to see these uh, crazy mistakes, and that's two delay of games so far, three total, one by Tampa Bay also. White will kick from the 15. Second punt of the game coming up. Holt backs up to about the 20. Fellows is there, and Holt inches his way to the 25-yard line. A 50-yard punt by Danny White, and Holt gets five yards, and a penalty marker is down. Penalty marker is down. So far, it's been the experienced Cowboys. Penalty this time against Tampa Bay. Cowboys been penalized more than the Bucks. This time the Bucks, and it could set him back. Yesterday, what did John McKay say about his specialty teams? He said, he's, I've talked to the coach. We don't know what our problems are there. We just make these crazy mistakes. That whether it's a drop snap, it's a, uh, it's a fumble. Lock punt. Or a key, uh, another key penalty twice now. They've set him back in the 10-yard line on penalties. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 52 on the return. First down. That's Scott Brantley. So it'll be to the, it'll start at the 13-yard line. And you're right, John McKay has no idea why the team can't do it in the special teams. And they're not doing it today. We're back here at Texas Stadium coming up at halftime. Halftime scores and highlights with Brenton Irv, a special feature, the legends of the game. And Irv will look at former St. Louis Cardinal great Larry Wilson, and Roger will have some things to say about that. He has met up with Larry many times. So it's first and 10 at the 13-yard line, and Williams is going deep for Kevin House, and it's overthrown. They try to pick up six and one play, and Dennis Thurman and Everson Walls were combining on the play, but you get an idea of the strong arm of Doug Williams on that incompletion. It was a nice rainbow, but it was too far. Now he had to put a little bit more arc on the ball. Sometimes when you have that strong arm, you, you level that ball off, and the receiver hasn't had a chance to get under it. And, of course, that time there wasn't much of an arc. It went a long way. Incompletion. Second and 10 at the 13. Detroit leading Chicago now after the Bears scored first on the field goal. Second down and 10. Owens. Jitterbugging his way to the 16-yard line. And now for an NFL Today update, let's go to Brent Busberger in New York. And, Dick, this is how the Lions have taken charge of the Bears. This was touchdown number one from a wing formation. Young Mark Nichols will get open, and Eric Hipple will hit him. Then in the next series, Jim McMahon, starting at quarterback, threw an interception to Ray Oldham. The Lions ran it in for a touchdown, 14-3. Let's go back to Dick in Dallas. Detroit unbeaten. Coming into this game at 2-0, seven defensive backs for Dallas. Third and six at the 17. Williams under pressure. He can run, and he will. And he may have a first down. Oh, that's awfully close right there. He, he went out right at the, uh, the marker, so that'll be interesting to see if he made that. And, of course, big number 73, Charlie Hanna, said he did make it. Everson Walls drove him out of bounds. Williams is getting them out of trouble when they're backed up as far as the field position is concerned. He did it earlier in the game when they were backed up, and here he is again. If he gets the first down, it's a big first down, and he did for Mark. Tampa Bay. Just watch him go here. Where's the, he sees that marker right there. He puts his foot down, and it is close. The referee marked the ball, and it's the first down. Harvey Martin really put the chase on to Doug Williams, and every coach will tell you before a game with Tampa Bay that the one worry they have, number one worry, is Doug Williams' ability to run. At the 23 now, first and 10, 9.32 remaining in the second quarter, 6 to nothing, Tampa Bay over Dallas in an eyebrow raiser. Wilder spins away from one tackle, and then he can't get away from Michael Downs and Everson Walls, who have been in on a lot of tackles. Is that good that the secondary have been in on so many? Well, Dallas forces a lot with their cornerbacks, and they've got sometimes they've got help deep from the safety, so 
they expect help from the secondary. And Michael Downs, as the weak safety, is really responsible for backing up that line of scrimmage. There you're looking at some of the, so the signs and the crowd. Keep in mind that the most no-shows the Cowboys ever had was 12,000. And the Dallas Cowboys have had sellouts ever since a Tampa Bay game in 1977. I don't see many empty seats. I know there are some, but I don't see many as we take a look. Williams to Gordon Jones, a first down at the 41-yard line. A brilliant play. Dennis Thurman makes the tackle. And it looks as if the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have been working out for eight weeks the way they are in gear in this game thus far. Well, that's a, you know, that's a tough pass over the middle. You got people running uh, around short, linebackers crossing over, and Williams has hit two big plays today. He's on target. When you can hit those line drives over the middle like this, you know you're on target. He hit one to Giles, and here comes Gordon Jones over that middle. Good play, and of course, a clearing route guy, or Mike Hagman was being cleared out. and 17-yard uh, pickup, and Owens gets to the 46, gain of maybe five yards on the play. Now we'll go back for another NFL Today update, and Brent Musburger has some more highlights in New York. Brent? Dick, some of the tackling is very sloppy. Watch now as Atlanta unfolds here. Bartkowski will be looking for Jenkins, and Perry's got Jenkins in his sights. He blows the tackle. Jenkins breaks free, goes 43 yards. It is now 14-7 L.A. Let's go back to Dick. All right, Brad, I want to ask Roger if he thinks the tackling has been sloppy in this one after this play. Second and six at the 46-yard line. Quick toss to House. House can't get away from Dennis Thurman, the cornerback. I don't know if I'd use the word sloppy, but uh, Tom Landry mentioned us with that four-man, what they call a flex defense, when you see those linemen off the line of scrimmage, it, it takes time to get coordinated. So either people are getting blocked well by Tampa Bay or they're not in position properly, but Tampa Bay, especially James Wilder, has broken some tackles today and he's done a good job. We understand that Tony Dorsett has a possible sprained right foot and it's unknown if he'll return until the fur further examination. They'll know more at halftime. They're icing it right now. First and 10 at the 46-yard line, and Wilder gets a yard. Everson Walls once again forcing on the play. You just mentioned that Dorsett situation, Dick. It's interesting. Here we're now going to be tested by Tom Landry. He's got a game Thursday. That sprained foot, maybe he could come back, but if he sprains it anymore, he'll be out Thursday. What is he going to do? Well, he's without Tony Dorsett, he's in a lot of trouble because that's the, the key man on this ball club. James Jones, the backup for Dorsett, is a pull leg muscle. Timmy Newsom is available, but when you go after Tony, there's a big gap there, no question. Second and eight at the 44. And the Thanksgiving Day game looms large in Landry's plans. Williams in the pocket, fires it to Owens, who has a first down. James Owens, who is a track star at UCLA and was drafted by San Francisco, and they used him at just about every position but running back has caught the ball here, and Tampa Bay continues the march. Well, they're mixing it up well. Bill Nelson is calling a good game, and Doug Williams is on target. Here's the uh, play this time. He's looking downfield, but he has the back coming out of the backfield. He, he looked down, got the linebackers back, and then came underneath the James Owens, and it was good enough for the first down. Outside linebackers Heckman and Brown made the stop as you look at James Owens, who was an Olympic hurdler in 1976. Don Smerick, number 60 is in the game now. There's Tony Dorsett's foot. I'd say it looks questionable for today. So when they talk about injuries coming back, Tom Landry told us when we talked to him Friday, he said, I don't think we'll have major injuries, maybe some hamstrings or muscle pulls, but I don't think he was thinking that his star running back would have this kind of problem. That is a tough injury for him. Gerald Carter, number 87, in for Tampa Bay. Three wide receivers, seven defensive backs for Dallas, second and eight at the 32. Tampa Bay marching with five minutes to go in the first half, and he dumps it off to Wilder. And a superb defensive play by Anthony Dickerson. There's Anthony Dickerson, who missed the entire camp because of a groin injury. He started the last game the Cowboys played against the Cardinals, and he has sheer ability in his third year from SMU. Well, you want to get a screen set up against the zone defense. Get everybody moving back, dump the ball off, let your blockers in front. But Dickerson had man-to-man -man coverage to the outside, so he's coming all the way. The blocker can't get to him, and, of course, he puts Wilder on the turf, and Anthony Dick Dickerson came through the block. Good job. Third and 12. Ball at the 36, Tampa Bay has to be thinking of a possible field goal attempt if they can get anything inside the 30. In motion, Gerald Carter. 
Williams gets by Harvey Martin. And the pass nearly intercepted by Monty Hunter, the fourth round draft choice from Salem College in West Virginia. Well, he saw Jimmy Giles over there, didn't see Monty Hunter, and Monty Hunter just dropped an interception. He might have been gone down that left sideline. Uh, Williams is talking to Giles and said, hey, you should have broke that way. And Giles said, hey, I broke the other way. And Hunter had the football. Here's a scramble. He gets out of the grasp of Harvey Martin right here, breaks out to the outside. He looks back across the field, sees Jimmy Giles. Of course, Giles falls down. Hunter drops the ball. So Larry Swider will punt for the first time at midfield. He had a punt blocked against Washington way back on the second week, and he's going for the corner. And he doesn't quite make it. It's into the end zone for a touchback. A 36-yard punt by Larry Swider. So the Dallas Cowboys, who have not been able to score, trailing 6 to nothing, will take over first and 10 on their 20-yard line. We have 3.56 remaining in the first half here in quiet Dallas, Texas. For the Cowboys, it has been less than that. Trailing 6 nothing. First and 10 on their 20. Drew Pearson in motion. And Ron Springs with Howard Richards blocking. And Tampa Bay in there again. The whistle had blown. Hugh Green, along with Andy Hawkins, combined to make the stop. Hugh Green, everyone talked about Lawrence Taylor as the big play man last year. Hugh Green wasn't far behind, Roger. No, Hugh Green came all the way from the other side of the field. He chased Springs all the way the crap back across the backfield and caught him from behind. He's, he's got tremendous range. He's a excellent blitzer when he does blitz, but he's got that range to go from sideline to sideline. Second and 10 at the 20. We have had one turnover of note, the interception by Cedric Brown, which led to a field goal. One injury of note, Tony Dorsett's possible strained right foot. Three minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the first half. Springs has been in there. And Springs on the receiving end, can't hold on to the ball. Never had control. Danny White trying to Get things in sync here. Andy Hawkins and Norris Thomas were defending in the secondary. Well, NCAA basketball is back on CBS. The North Carolina Tar Heels, the defending NCAA champions, go against Missouri with an outstanding guard, John Sunbold, next Saturday, 1 o'clock Eastern time. Gary Bender, Billy Packer will be courtside at the Checker Dome in St. Louis. You know, I don't like to wear out. It's a, it's a big play, but I'll wear it out here. This is a big play. Dallas needs something before the half. Tampa Bay. Needs to stop him here and keep him out of the uh, end zone for the first half. Big play coming up. Tampa Bay has outgamed Dallas 156 to 26. White has time at the 10. He's going up top for Butch Johnson. And Johnson has it. Butch Johnson of California Quake fame. A 49-yard reception. Cedric Brown brought him down. And the Cowboys may be cooking now. Now that's a big play. Neil Colsey, number 20, just wasn't quite in position. Cedric Brown, but Butch Johnson also made an excellent catch. He had two people around him, but White put it right on the money. Danny White is a big play quarterback, and he comes up with one here to a receiver that makes these spectacular catches, Butch Johnson. Right over his shoulder, Colsey's a step late, and Cedric Brown can't make the play either. Johnson coming off his best year, first and 10 Dallas at the Tampa Bay 31. In motion, Drew Pearson. And White will put it up again. Pearson. To the 16-yard line. Norris Thomas stops him. And Drew Pearson has now caught a pass in 37 consecutive games. And he already holds the club record at 58 straight. This is a play-action pass here. And it was really to Tony Hill was running the post deep down the left sideline. White couldn't find him. He was double teamed there. He came off late to Drew Pearson who came back. Pearson was running to the left side, saw White scramble to the right and came back in excellent position to get the first down. So we have our two minute warning right now. The Dallas Cowboys have awakened the crowd here and a very fine crowd. We'll know more about no shows at halftime, but we don't have that many. It's Tampa Bay six, Dallas nothing, but the Cowboys are knocking on the Buccaneers door.
Coming up at halftime, the NFL today. Brendan Erb with scores and highlights on the return to the professional football scene. And listen to the game, Larry Wilson. I helped get Larry in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> I threw a few interceptions to Larry. Two in one game, I remember, in St. Louis one year. But a great one. Now with the St. Louis Cardinals in the front office. Danny White, six for eight for 105 yards and one interception. So all the work the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have achieved and achieved well in the first half could wind up with them trailing by a point if the Cowboys score. Big, big psychological shift, too. I'll tell you, the only time the crowd has booed the Cowboys is during was after a delay of game penalty. First and 10 with two minutes to go is Ron Springs. Tries for second effort. Timmy Newsom. I had an old coach in uh, college that said, "Let the, don't get the crowd mad, let them sleep. And the uh, Dallas crowd was asleep to that Bush Johnson play. Timmy Newsom, who has switched from fullback to tailback, is seeing action in place of Tony Dorsett when the Cowboys don't use their spread offense. Cosby, number 84, is split to the right. Second and eight at the 14. And Springs just gets inside the 10. Clock running, 1-10 remaining in the first half. Ron Springs, who gained 70 yards against Tampa Bay in their playoff game. Leroy Selman made the tackle there. Springs is his fourth year from Ohio State at 12 touchdown receptions last year. We've had three third in threes on the 10-yard line. Tampa Bay had two of them. They got field goals. This is Dallas's first chance. See what they do. Cowboys have called the timeout. They have two left. And when we come back here, the Cowboys will have the ball inside the 10. It'll be third and three with 108 remaining in the half. Coming up next, most of you will see the 49ers defending Super Bowl champs at 0-2 against the St. Louis Cardinals. In St. Louis, some of you will see the Washington Redskins who are 2-0 against the New York Giants, 0-2. That game following this on CBS Sports. I want to remind you, coming up at halftime, Brennan Irv with the scores and highlights and the legends of the game, Irv Cross with Larry Wilson of the Cardinals. That's the story. Ron Springs is the lone running back. Cosby and Dupree, two tight ends, and Booker Reese, number 66, the promising rookie from Bethune-Cookman. In there is the fourth down line. Keep your eye on those two tight ends. Third and three, and White. All alone, touchdown, Drew Pearson. Well, Drew Pearson was not the receiver. He wanted to go to the, both the tight ends. He looked to both sides. And Cedric Brown. Kind of kept looking, staring at Danny White. He didn't realize Drew Pearson was behind him. But watch White come back. He's hesitant right here. He's looking out to Cosby, and he goes back looking for Dupree. And now he sees Pearson, but Cedric Brown doesn't know where he's looking, so he's watching the quarterback, and he's up in front of Pearson, doesn't look around to see where Pearson is, and it's a touchdown. All-time Dallas leading receiver, Drew Pearson, 10th year from Tulsa. He was an unknown free agent when he started and became the all-time best for the Dallas Cowboys. And there's Rafael Septien with Glenn Carano holding for the Cowboys to try to give Dallas the lead with 103 remaining in the first half. The kick is good, and Dallas leads it 7-6. Cowboys in front. We'll be back with the kickoff. Dallas scoring drive, the big one, the 49-yard pass from White to Butch Johnson, 103 remaining in the first half, and Septien will kick off for the Cowboys. Deep, Michael Morton, number one, and Johnny Ray Smith, number 22, a pair of rookies for Tampa Bay. There's Septien coming off a marvelous campaign. And here's Michael Morton, a free, a 12th round draft choice at 5'8". And he gets out to about the 19-yard line when Tampa Bay will take over. Steve Wright makes the tackle for Dallas. So it's 7-6 to six to score. Cedric Brown with an interception 
And Bill Capiz kicked two field goals to give Tampa Bay a 6-0 lead before this last Dallas drive that put him in front. As far as the fans are concerned, they're glad that they've got football again. As we told you, this is the earliest start ever for the Cowboys at home, noon their time. And uh, we hope that fan's going to be around a while. They expected no shows anywhere from about 8 to 15 or 12,000. We'll know more, but the stadium looks filled and they're enthused now that Dallas is in business. They only booed them once. First and 10, 58 seconds to go. And Wilder gets to the 24-yard line. Randy White makes the stop for Dallas, and we will now have a Tampa Bay timeout. They also have two timeouts remaining, as do the Cowboys. So we'll take another break. 51 seconds remaining in the half, and Tampa Bay would like to get back that lead before intermission. The preceding message was brought to you by the National Football League. Larry Bethea and Don Smerick are in the game now, and John Dutton, Harvey Martin go out. Smerick, who's at 6'7", is a free agent in his second year. He's wearing number 60. He's on the comeback trail, was a backup last year, had an injured knee, then was shot during his recovery time. They like him, obviously. Second and six at the 24 for Tampa Bay. Gerald Carter in motion and pressure, and the pass. Incomplete, Theo Bell, the intended receiver, and Ron Fellows from Missouri makes the play. There's Theo Bell, who banged with Ron Fellows on that play. Theo Bell, of course, former Pittsburgh Steeler. Watch Smerick and Bethay in the line. Number 60 is Big Don Smerick. He's coming in, and Bethay to the outside, and when Williams releases this pass here, it's awfully close to inter uh, interference. We won't see that. We'll see the rush at the two. New people coming in, and that's part of the substitution. Uh, Landry substituting the defensive line. Although the Cowboys have not substituted much on offense, more than they normally would. Tampa Bay hasn't hardly at all on defense. Third and six now, 47 seconds to go in the first half. The ball at the 24. In motion, Carter. Big third down play, and here's Carter with a diving catch and a first down. Short of the 40-yard line, a 16-yard pickup, and Dennis Thurman makes the tackle on Gerald Carter. Originally a ninth-round draft choice by the Bucks was waived, pick up by the Jets. They let him go, and Tampa Bay's happy they have him again. Talk to Bill Nelson about him. He likes uh, he likes Carter. Here's Williams getting the first down. If they hadn't got the first down, Dallas has a chance to maybe come back for a field goal. Now they're in position to maybe get a field goal or a touchdown. There's Carter hauling the ball in, beats his man to the inside. Number 32, Dennis Thurman. He gets the first down. And Gives Ch Tampa Bay a chance maybe to get back in this game. Roger, we ought to say a word about Dave Revis, number 75, and George Yarno, number 68, the men on the left side of the Tampa Bay line. Revis starting in place of Gene Sanders. He's the most experienced lineman. Sanders was the victim of Harvey Martin's rushing last year in the playoff. Yarno starting when Sean Farrell returned a day late. Ray Snell is back, and I think the left side of the line Revis, number 75, and Yarno, 68, deserve a lot of credit to, for protecting Doug Williams the way they have in this first half. I agree. This game is also, when I say get back in the game, I mean more psychologically because Tampa Bay has played the socks off of Dallas until the last three minutes. Now they're behind. So Dallas is revved up. Tampa Bay is a little bit depressed. They need to get something big happening. 41 seconds to go in the half, as you see, on the 40, first and 10 for Tampa Bay. Carter in motion. And Williams going up top. He has Jimmy Giles and just passed him. Double covered, and Giles just couldn't reach it. The pass just slightly overthrown. Just a little more arc, and Giles has that ball. Giles beats uh, the double coverage down the middle. He had the, uh, they were doubling Giles inside and out. Giles made a little hesitation and went deep. Both downs and the uh, strong safety, Benny Barnes, that time had him inside and out, but he broke past him and just a little more arc, and that's a big play. Interesting that Tom Landry said after a long pass through, we're going to take out a receiver. Jimmy Giles stays in the game, however, after that long burst. Gordon Jones came in with the play, 84. He split to the left, second and 10 at the 40. 7-6 to six, Dallas over Tampa Bay here in a surprise. Williams, go 
throwing for Kevin House, and that was way out of bounds. So it'll be third and 10 now, where Tampa Bay has converted six of nine so far today. Doug Williams against the Dallas Cowboys has thrown one touchdown pass and has had six intercepted. But this year, coming in, has completed nearly 54% of his passes. Third and 10. John McKay, whose teams have won two division titles in the last three years. They are the defending Central Division titles, although division play doesn't mean anything anymore. Six defensive backs for the Cowboys on third and 10. And the pass is complete. It'll be way short of a first down by eight yards. And a fine catch by Theo Bell, and it's amazing how Doug Williams, and that shows his strength, ever got that's, the ball I, off. That's exactly what I was gonna say. It shows the strength that he has. He was off balance, going down, and he just whipped that ball out to the side, and it wasn't a meaningful play. Ed Jones put the pressure on, but it shows the strength of his arm to get that ball out there. Not many quarterbacks would have got that ball out there. Well, at least Doug Williams can breathe in this game. He has gotten away with the first half unscathed, and maybe so of the Dallas Cowboys, considering the fact that Tampa Bay had the ball more. And that is the end of the first half here at Texas Stadium with the score, Dallas 7, Tampa Bay 6. Hey, welcome back to New York. Irv, you've been taking an overview. What kind of football are we seeing? Well, it's not uh, normal midseason NFL football. Brandon. A little sloppy, but it's simply a reflection of a long layoff and a short week of preparation. They're not as sharp as they normally would be, obviously. I have seen that the good teams are still pretty good, the bad teams are still atrocious, and the Rams cannot hold the lead. Let's show you what has gone on down there. It is the Rams 14 and the Falcons 14. A lot of no-shows down there in Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. And here was Jones going to Wendell Tyler. It's a classic sweep. The guards get out in front of him, and Tyler goes in from five yards out. And the Rams appeared to be making a route of the game. Remember their opener against Green Bay? They did the same thing. Here is Ron Battle. He goes in. It was 14-0. And then, uh, Irv, I think this was some of the sloppy tackling you were talking about. No doubt about it. Here's Steve Bartkowski hits uh, Alfred Jenkins. And, you know, the defender had a great shot at him, bounced off, and there goes Jenkins for the touchdown. Now, on this punt return, here comes an old friend, White Shoes Johnson. And he's going to haul it back 71 yards to the Rams' 21-yard line. And from there, Gerald Riggs went in after the Falcons had moved inside the five, their rookie and their top draft choice. And so now, as you can see on our board, they are tied at 14. And the AFC, New Orleans over Kansas City, and 10-7, they are at the half of that game. Meanwhile, Detroit and Chicago, 14-3, and the Bears have been absolutely dreadful. Those boos not for the Bears, but for both teams when they came out to demonstrate their solidarity before the start of the game. And then the crowd turned sour on the home team. Here was Wayne Smith with an interception against the rookie Jim McMahon from BYU starting his first game for the Bears. And from there, Eric Hipple will roll left, throw with the right hand. Mark Nichols out of the wing for the touchdown. McMahon back after the kickoff. Ray Oldham picks it off and goes 35 yards. It was 14-3. How bad are the Bears been? You don't believe me? Watch this. Half the team pulls back. And there's the football. You talk about a timing problem, or across. They got more than that right now. And <laughs> Chicago, okay. I don't mean to pick on the Bears, but they really are atrocious today. Well, they're having a bad day today. All right. Okay. All Give them right. a break. <laughs> All right. Meanwhile, in County Stadium, the Green Bay Packers in Minnesota, and the Packers now have just moved ahead in that game, 13-7 over the Vikes. Remember, the Packers are 2-0 right now. And Pittsburgh and Houston, 10-3. Terry Bradshaw has thrown a touchdown pass. That is the 200th of his career. He is only four behind the active leader, Jim Hart, of the St. Louis Cardinals. Cincinnati over Philadelphia, 8-0. And that's right, it was 5 to nothing, and then they got a second field goal, two field goals, and a safety. Now 8-0, the Bengals with the lead. Miami and Buffalo, the only two unbeatens meeting today, and the Bills lead by an extra point, 7-6 over two Dolphin field goals in that game. The Jets are having the easiest time of all, 27-0. Frank Cush had contact two-a-days, 
he probably left the Colts game back there in Baltimore. New England and Cleveland has been a tough defensive game so far. They are in the second quarter and they are scoreless. Meanwhile, of course, the game you are watching here, the Dallas Cowboys leading Tampa Bay 7-6. The NFL Today continues on CBS after these messages from your local stations. I don't have to tell you that when pass receivers run their patterns, they often hear the footsteps of defensive backs who try to intimidate them. And back in the 1960s, no one's footsteps were more intimidating than those of Larry Wilson, the all-pro safety for the St. Louis Cardinals. Irv Cross now has a profile of Larry on Legends of the Game. The perfect NFL defensive back needs the physical ability of a decathlon star and the luck of a riverboat gambler. Not only must he have the speed to cover fleet-wide receivers, but he also must have the toughness to wrestle a big back to the ground. I tried it for nine years, and I know. That's me, number 27, Irv Cross, back when I played cornerback for the Los Angeles Rams. Having collided with a lot of people, bigger, faster, and stronger than myself, I've come to appreciate the raw courage it takes to play defensive back. And in the history of this sport, I don't think there was ever a defensive back to play with more of that courage than Hall of Famer Larry Wilson. Today, he's director of pro personnel for the St. Louis Cardinals, and as you can see, has a whole mouthful of teeth. But back in his playing days, he looked a little different, for nobody ever played safety with the calculated recklessness of Larry Wilson. Free safety really should be making a lot of tackles. He should be up there. He should get a lot of tips, too. The total key to success in the secondary breaks down into hustle. It may take you a little time to read the play, but then after you read it, run like heck to get there, and more than likely you're going to find some action, and that's where the fun is. You know, if you're just standing around, there's no fun. you got to be beating on folks. His favorite technique was a safety blitz, a Larry Wilson original. The Cardinals was known as a blitzing team, and we'd blitz all three linebackers, and they were still picking us up. So I started cheating up a little bit, and then uh, I started coming. And with shooting the safety man, they didn't have enough folks. And all you had to do was tackle one of those old slow quarterbacks. Larry, in 1965, he finished the season with cast on two broken hands. Now, why did you play? Uh, there was really, really, uh, really no reason not to play. They looked a lot worse than they were. You had to pad over the cast and stuff like that. And it was a situation where the club needed me to play, and I wanted to play. Grew. The smartest quarterbacks in football couldn't fool him. The fastest wide receivers couldn't beat him deep. And in the end, nobody could deny this most courageous of defensive backs his rightful place in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I really honestly never considered myself to be that caliber of player. But I tell you what, I'm so proud of that. Uh, what a thrill in your life. You wish everybody could have an experience like that. Irv, what does Larry do in the Cardinal front office? He's director of pro personnel right now, so he's responsible for scouting pro clubs, so he's been quiet during the strike. Exactly. The college scouts, though, have been busy because I think we should point out that they have moved up the college draft in the NFL so they can better compete with the new football league. It's into February. Now let's send you back to the stadium and the game you're enjoying on CBS. Back here at Texas Stadium, the Dallas Cowboys lead the Tampa Bay Bucks 7 6. Dick Stockton, along with Roger Starback. I'm interested in your views. First of all, why has Dallas struggled so much on offense, particularly early, Roger? I think it's a combination. Tampa Bay is a very aggressive defense. Before the strike, they were playing very well on defense, and Dallas has got a multiple offense. It takes a while to get the machine probably oiled and, and geared and, and moving in precision. They're not doing that now. How do you rate the, the kind of caliber of play we're seeing in this game? A lot of players said the fans would not be able to tell that it wouldn't quite be what midseason form would be. Can you? 
I think the players came back Wednesday and Thursday. They were fired up. I think their legs have got a little bit loggy, and uh, I think it's starting to show. I don't think the game is is the is the caliber of a normal normal NFL game, and the players looked a little bit fatigued to me towards the end of the second quarter. But overall, the intensity started out uh, very high, very good. But the caliber of play, I think, is is uh, is not is not the greatest. The score is good. But the uh, the precision and the uh, the way a game should be played is not uh, at an NFL caliber right now. All right, uh, Tony Dorsett's injury. People will say, well, it's because of the layoff. That's why he got hurt. He might have gotten hurt anyway. Well, he's been very durable, so maybe the evidence is because of the strike. All right, that's the story here from Roger Staubach. We'll be ready for the second half kickoff shortly with the Cowboys leading Tampa Bay seven to six. <laughs> Texas Stadium, we will find out how many no-shows we had. Tony Dorsett, thankfully for the Cowboys, is a show as we start the second half. He had a possible strained right foot, had ice packs on it, and apparently Tony Dorsett looks as if he's going to get into the action. Now you're looking at the two quarterbacks in the game, Danny White, who's 7 for 9 for 114 yards. He's on the right with one touchdown and one interception, and Doug Williams, who's 11 for 20 for 100 yards. And his longest pass was 22 yards, and both quarterbacks, particularly Williams, have played very well. Looking at the halftime statistics, if you take away for Dallas that 49-yard pass play from White to Butch Johnson, they gained only 58 yards offensively, which is far below what they normally do. I was surprised at the rushing average for Tampa Bay, but we're underway here in the second half. Johnny Ray Smith, a rookie defensive back, turned away and started to head back and he's inside the 20 to about the 17 yard line. Tackle made by Steve Wright. So Johnny Ray Smith, who is an 11th round draft choice from Lamar on that return and Tampa Bay going on offense first and 10. The quarterback is Doug Williams. They were using James Owens and James Wilder at the running back spot. Williams. 64 touchdowns thrown. That's more than any other active quarterback in the last four years. A lot of people maybe didn't know that. Tailback is James Owens. Wilder, the up back. First and 10, and it's James Owens pulling his way up the middle and gets negligible yards. Don Smerrick makes the stop. So Smerrick, number 60, starts on defense for the Dallas Cowboys at the left tackle position. There's Don, who is 6'7", 257 yards. Uh, Pounds, and that height has got to help him. That's that's right, and I wonder why Dutton isn't starting. He had some pr uh, problems before the strike with the leg, but I uh, talked to him the other day. He said he was fine, but Schmerick's in there. Kevin House is yet to catch a pass. Second and eight at the 21-yard line, and House is split wide to the right. To the 30-yard line, House makes his first reception, and Everson Walls makes the play. Following this game on CBS, this is a doubleheader weekend. The San Francisco 49ers try to get on the winning column against the St. Louis Cardinals or the Washington Redskins against the New York Giants. Four o'clock Eastern following this game. All games important, and keep in mind those are all NFC games, and the top eight teams in the NFC will advance to the tournament, the Super Bowl tournament. San Francisco and New York both looking for their first victories. First and 10 at the 30-yard line for Tampa Bay, trailing seven to six. And here's James Owens. Owens finds a hole and gets to the 36-yard line. Tackle made by Guy Brown. He had a good finish last year to James Owens, but got off to a slow start this season. Don't forget, he's playing in place of Jerry Eckwood, who is out for the year. He normally is the starting running back for Tampa Bay. Second and four after the six-yard pickup. The ball at the 36. Dick Stockton and Roger Staubach here at Texas Stadium. On a summery afternoon, over 70 degrees here in the Dallas area. Owens slowed up by Harvey Martin, and he manages to pick up a few. It'll be third and short for Tampa Bay. Dennis Thurman finally made the tackle on Owens after Harvey Martin slowed up James Owens as soon as he got the ball. There you're looking at the Dallas defense. Harvey Martin, who led the team in sacks in the two games they played with four. Here's Harvey, he's sneaking inside right here. He sees the, the play developing, and all of a sudden, because of his recognition, instead of following that tackle back to the inside, he came off of him and, of course, uh, penetrated 
cause some problems and give the other guys a chance to clean up with Guy Brown and Schmerich gets over there also. Three wide receivers in there for Tampa Bay at third and three. Doug Williams is going for Giles. Jimmy Giles, hard to bring down, has a first down at the 15-yard line. Michael Down stayed with him and rode on Giles back for about five yards, and Jimmy has a 48-yard hookup with Doug Williams on a big play Tampa Bay well, strike. This was the matchup we were going to see. Benny Barnes, a fine uh, strong safety for Dallas, has a little bit of a tough time against any good man-to-man -man guys, especially a guy like Kevin Winslow and Jimmy Giles, and Giles just beats him to the outside, and Downs does a good job of uh, following behind, throwing him to the ground, and also hurts his left shoulder a little bit. So for Giles, that is his second reception. Big tight end who can catch first and 10 at the 15 for Tampa Bay. They're trailing Dallas, seven to six. Wilder stepped up and a quick toss to Theo Bell. Out of bounds at the 10 yard line. Everson Walls was right with him. So Theo Bell, who two years ago led the AFC at average yards per catch while he was with the Pittsburgh Steelers, brings Tampa Bay closer inside the 10. You know, teams really uh, use their plays and, of course, on recognition what another team does. You've seen a lot of these hook patterns where Dallas's defensive backs are so far off that they don't even run the, the quick outs to the sidelines. Hey, just hook in front of them. And that's three or four that hit today. Second and four at the nine. In motion, House, followed by Thurman. James Owens gets to the six-yard line. And a smart play for Tampa Bay there. And I think several times today, the Bucks have had some running room up the middle. They have. They've hit, uh, hit the middle very well today with some draws and some also some traps. But here's Tampa Bay again. They're down inside the Dallas 10. They need to get uh, seven points on the scoreboard instead of three, but they're in good position right here. They've got a third and two. Offensive line, Steve Wilson, the center, Greg Roberts, the right guard. Kudos to them. Third and two at the seven. And Owens, stop. <laughs> Benny Barnes. With Charlie Waters retiring, Benny Barnes got the shot at strong safety, the 11-year free agent veteran from Stanford. Well, this time, Owens starts to hit inside, breaks to the outside, and there's Benny. Benny got beat by Giles, but he makes up for it, prevents the touchdown, or at least the first down right here. And now Tampa Bay's back in that field goal situation again. So three times they had an opportunity to get seven or six on the scoreboard, and they had to settle for a field goal. This is a 26-yard attempt, and the kick is good. Tampa Bay regains the lead. Well, a lot of people at halftime thought that the Dallas Cowboys would just come back and put away Tampa Bay. They still might, but the Bucs at least have taken the lead early in the third. You're looking at the remainder of the Tampa Bay schedule, four home and three away. However, I think the Buccaneers are not overly pleased. They lost out a game with Baltimore, plus division games that they wanted to play, like two with Green Bay, which they would have preferred, but they still have to play in the AFC East, the Jets away, and Miami and Buffalo, three tough teams. And keep in mind that the Chicago Bears at home are their extra game added on on January 2nd. Look over the Dallas remainder schedule in a little while. Ron Fellows, a yard in the end zone, returns the kickoff for the Cowboys. And Fellows gets to about the 23-yard line where Dallas takes over first and 10. Bill Capice has accounted for all of the scoring for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with three field goals. Andy Hawkins made the tackle. That's the only area, though, that uh, really presents a problem to me. Tampa Bay has really mixed up their offense well today. They've run, they've hit the passes over the middle, hit the backs out of the backfield, hit the big play. But inside that 10-yard line, there's the imagination has been uh, kind of dim. Uh, that third and two before, line. if they would have just got a yard and a half up the middle, they kind of could have went for a fourth and a half. But they didn't do it, and it's been costly today. Tony Dorsett comes out and is in the lineup. He carried four times for 11 yards in the first half before being injured. But the first man to carry here is Ron Springs, who dives forward to the 27. Scott Brantley, the inside linebacker, makes the stop. Next Sunday, the NFL. Green Bay and the New York Jets. Philadelphia against Washington. St. Louis and Atlanta. New Orleans against San Francisco. 12.30 Eastern, and it all begins with the NFL today with Brent, Irv, Phyllis, and the gang. Jimmy, 
on CBS. Good to be back in business again, and I'm sure that the fans feel the same way. They gave the Cowboys a rousing cheer when they were introduced before the game. There were no handshakes of any kind before the game either. By the players, I should say. Second and four. And here's Dorsett with the hurting knee, diving for the first down and cutting to the 32-yard line, and it is a Dallas first down. Stalls and Colsey make the stop. Well, he looks like he started the game at this point with no trace of a limp, Roger. Now, that was the ankle that uh, created some problems. He had ice on it. Went back at halftime. They analyzed it and said, Tony, we feel you won't hurt it any worse. How do you feel? We got a game Thursday, and they're taking the chance. They're playing in the second half, and hopefully it won't be too sore tomorrow, and we'll get a chance to play on Thursday also. By the way, that was the first Dallas first down rushing in this game. 8.20 remaining in the third quarter. 9-7, to seven, Tampa Bay leading Dallas. White springs. He has a first down and gets to midfield. Good play. Ron Springs, who, along with Tony Hill, led the Cowboys in receiving last year, brought down by Neil Colsey. They wanted Springs to work on his blocking this year, but here's he still catch. Here's the fake inside to Dorsett, and play action is good against a team like Tampa. They drop those linebackers back very deep and of course, play action sometimes hold him. If they still go back, he can hit the backs underneath, which they did that time, into the flat, and he beat Hawkins to the outside, and Tampa Bay has been hurt on play action pass today. 15-yard pickup at the 49 of Dallas. First down. Dorsett gets ahead of steam and has another Dallas first down into Tampa Bay territory. At the 41-yard line, Colsey and Cedric Brown in the secondary, and Tony Dorsett cooking. Here's a little uh, fake to the left side. Cosby coming in, cleaning up on the inside linebacker that time on Cecil Johnson and gives Dorsett some room up the middle. That little fake to the left that time by Dorsett got the linebackers in position for everyone to make their blocks. Rafferty 64 and Richard 70 also got good blocks in that play. 10-yard pickup, 15 on the play before. That's what Tony has done. They're going to measure it. John Dutton, by the way, the defensive left tackle for the Cowboys, has a bruised right shoulder. He's not expected to return. They are short by just about the length of a football, maybe less. It'll be second and one. And, of course, Roger, you've been in this spot. Opens up, when you look at the field position, a lot of possibilities here. Well, it's a good time for the play action pass, or you can waste a play here, take a chance on a big play. What about, uh, you know, we just saw Dorsett here. He made a nice run up the middle. What happens with all those 1,000-yard seasons he's had? This kind of this strike probably will affect him. He might not make it this year. He needs 125 a game to reach that point. Buffalo leading Miami 7-6 third quarter. New Orleans still in front of Kansas City. Second and one at the 42 of Tampa Bay. Atlanta leading L.A. close game. They're going to go to the air. And Pearson can't hold on to it, so it'll be third and one. We have not had a turnover in the game for those that thought we would have an incredible amount of those since the Cedric Brown interception early. Danny White, last year in the playoff against Tampa Bay, completed 15 for 143 yards. That's John Makovic next to Tom Landry. Young coach who used to be the head coach at Wake Forest before coming to Dallas. Third and one at the 42. Tony Dorsett has the first down and gets to the inside the 40-yard line. Now the Cowboys seem to be in sync with their offense, Roger, mixing the plays better. And of course, it's nice to have Dorsett when you need the yards on the ground. Well, the only big drives ahead in the first half came on big plays. No consistency in their, their drives. This is the first drive they've been able to run the football. Want to remind you, Thanksgiving Day, the New York Giants against the Detroit Lions in the traditional contest beginning at noon Eastern. All begins with the NFL today. What would Thanksgiving be without the Detroit Lions? Dallas Cowboys also play that day, so they've got two games in five days. White on first and 10, and that pass bounced. That was an incompleted pass. It bounced to Tony Hill, and Mike Washington was defending on the play. I think one official thought it was a completion. Well, the other one said it bounced, and I thought it bounced. 
Well, based on my eye contact with the field, which is probably questionable, that's why I retired. That ball looked like it definitely bounced. Yes. I don't know what Tony Hill's grabbing about. Well, we'll see it again. The uh, replays make liars out of all of us, I guess. I think it bounced, and here we see it right now. Tony Hill's, uh, he's open if the ball's thrown a little bit higher. It bounced. You can see the way it came up on his hands that it bounced. It did. Second and 10. Nine to seven, Tampa Bay leading Dallas. 6.06 .06 remaining in the third quarter. Dick Stockton and Roger Staubach. Cosby in motion. And here's a re play action reverse fake. And the screen to Ron Springs with a wall of blockers. And Springs may have a first down inside the 30. Scott Bradley makes the tackle. And a great block by the right guard, Kurt Peterson, set the play up. They're going to measure this one, but Kurt Peterson, number 65, did get the key block. He's the strongest cowboy as far as weightlifting, and he's a young coming guard of all pro caliber, according to Jim Myers. But the fake reverse coming back to the other side, having the lineman out in front. There's 64 Rafferty and 65 Peterson doing a good job downfield. Rafferty also gets a nice block, knocks down Big number 59, Andy Hawkins. They're short by a couple of inches. Short by inches. Dorsett coming in with the play from Tom Landry. Tell you, Landry took a lot of time to send this play in. He kind of explained some things to Tony there. They might try something unusual on this uh, situation. Inside the 30-yard line, this is another time with a third down and one that you can go for the big play. Play action. Dallas likes to run an off-tackle play with a fullback swinging to the outside, and this might be the time to do it, a short yardage play. It'll be third and one, less than one for Dallas. Phil Posderick, number 75, is in the game along with Cosby and Dupre. Billy Joe Dupre has... Third and one. And Dorsett slices off, has a first down. Out of bounds at the 20 penalty marker thrown. Had to be face mask. There's nobody around the uh, defender there, so it had to be against Tampa Bay. Norris Thomas appears to be the guilty party. Another good block by Kurt Peterson from Missouri, and it should be against the Buccaneers. Tampa Bay leading 9-7 to seven on three Bill Capice field goals. And the one touchdown pass from Danny White to Drew Pearson. Face mask, five yards, number 41 on the end of the run, first down. Here's Dorsett, breaks through the line of scrimmage, gets to the outside, knows he has the first down, now he wants some more, he wants it all. Norris number 41, Thomas Norris, on the face mask. Norris Thomas, there it is. So it's a first down, it's at the 14-yard line for the Cowboys. Tony Dorsett, reminder, we told you earlier, his team's 28-1 and when he gains 100 or more yards. The penalty story there. Dorsett had 98 yards on the ground in the victory over the Cardinals the second week of the season. He has gained over 1,000 yards every year as a football player, 11 years, and that includes Aliquippa High School and outside of Pittsburgh and the University of Pittsburgh and of course all the seasons with the Dallas Cowboys up to this year. The Atlanta Falcons stretch their lead now to six over the LA Rams in the third quarter. And we'll have a break now. 525 remaining in the third quarter. Dallas driving and trailing. The shaken up official is the umpire, Gordon Wells. And that occurred over on that last play. And Gordon apparently is all right. And we're set to resume. First and 10 Cowboys on the Tampa Bay 14 yard line. Tony Hill comes out to the right, Drew Pearson to the left. Cosby and Dupree are twin tight ends. Play action. Second receiver and down. He could not find the receiver and Hugh Green, who's probably the best blitzing lineman, linebacker on this Tampa Bay team came in. He had some help as well from the other outside linebacker, Andy Hawkins. 
So a key defensive play for Tampa Bay, Hugh Green, who Joe Gibbs of the Redskins says practically unblockable. Loss of eight on the play. Pat Donovan comes back in the game at left tackle. He was replaced by Phil Posderick, the rookie from Notre Dame. Tampa Bay, three quarterback sacks today for 38 yards. And Doug Williams has been protected well. At the 22, second and 18. Dumps it off to Dorsett. To the 20, 15, 10. And he's stopped. Penalty flag again down. Dorsett got to the five. Good block by Tom Rafferty, the center this time. And the crowd on their feet. This could be an important penalty because if it's against Tampa Bay, it's another first down. It is. Personal foul against the Bucks. Dorsett, who was on the sidelines for most of the first half, uh, I saw the orange jersey kind of came in there a little bit late. And evidently, the official called it a late hit. Special foul, unnecessary roughness, number 66, first down. John McKay knows that with a young team, he has one player who's 30 years old. Everyone is younger than that. Booker Reese, number 66, hit the late hit on Tony. That was an excellent call this time. A screen to the outside. Tampa Bay had a blitz on. One of the few they've had. They've had they had two linebackers coming, and here's Dorsett. That's not the end of it. There we go. Line, bam. Ooh. At 6'6, 260 on top of Tony Dorsett. First and goal at the three for the Dallas Cowboys. Dorsett looking and gets to about the three-yard line. And it's really getting physical inside there. Norris Thomas. The left cornerback, who has a reputation for forcing the play, coming up, and now I, I detect this, what, a slight limp for Dorsett. He's limping. Uh, it's like on that same ankle again, but he's staying in the game. Robert Newhouse has come in the game for Ron Springs, the 11-year veteran from Houston, who is a busy man as the player rep for the Cowboys. Second and goal at the three. In motion, Cosby. Newhouse, touchdown! And it was the block of Tom Rafferty and Kurt Peterson up front that set it up for Robert Newhouse in his first play of the game, scores to give Dallas the lead again. Well, here's the play with Cosby coming down. He helps in the middle this time. He gets a nice block. Double teams with Rafferty, number 64 and 84, get the block, and there's also Donovan driving his man into the end zone. And of course, Newhouse scores fairly easily from that inside trap position. Peterson, 65, also blocks well. Good inside blocking by the Cowboys, led by Doug Cosby coming in from the motion position. Septiem with Glenn Carano holding, adding the conversion here with 3.57 remaining in the third quarter. And the kick is good. So the Dallas Cowboys in a close battle leading Tampa Bay 14-9 here in the third. There's the drive and Robert Newhouse with the touchdown, the 31st of his career, 11-year pro from Houston. And the Dallas Cowboys are now leading 14-9 here. And as we wind down toward the end of this third quarter with 3.57 to go, Septian kicking off. It's easier to substitute when you're leading than when you're behind. Michael Morton, two yards in the end zone. Tripped up and gets to the 17. George Peoples makes the stop. Taking a look now at the Dallas Cowboys remainder of the schedule. They like what and they were dealt four home and three away. They avoided road games at Philadelphia, at the Giants, and away games at last year's Super Bowl team, San Francisco and Cincinnati. Their makeup game is against the Vikings in Minnesota indoors. So I don't think the Dallas Cowboys are complaining at their schedule, Rod. First and 10 at the 18. Doug Williams trying to bring the Buccaneers back. Brunig almost found himself with a football on first and 10. 10 remaining. Three wide receivers for Tampa Bay. Gerald Carter in there, number 87. 
Swing it out to Wilder. James Wilder picks up seven or eight yards. And Everson Walls, who is, has to be the leading tackler for Dallas this afternoon, stops the second-year fullback from Missouri. Walls, who is raised just two miles from the Cowboy practice field, is a free agent who led the NFL with 11 interceptions last year and only the sixth rookie free agent to go to the Pro Bowl. That's right, Everson Walls has had a great season last year. He's off to a good start this year. Gene Stallings says he's, he's even improved in training camp. You know, the legs are getting heavy. That time, Wilder didn't try to make a move. It looks like he might be getting a little tired, Dick. That's something you would see. Maybe the fans would. Second and two, Williams. Tipped, intercepted. There's a pound field. Guy Brown on the interception on the tip pass, but a penalty marker is down near midfield. Don Smerick at 6-7 tipped that pass by Doug Williams, who was on his way down. It's against Dallas. And that will nullify, that will nullify the interception and will also give Tampa Bay an automatic first down. Looks like it might have been holding downfield, but Doug Williams saw that he didn't have his receiver, and that's when he just had to take the sack. He tried to salvage a play and made a mistake right there, but he got away with, with the penalty. That's one of the reasons, you know, this year, Doug Williams has been sacked only twice. He is one of the best at avoiding sacks. He couldn't last Defense, year. Defense, number 56, first down. He couldn't last year in that 38-0 route, but he's done it pretty well for most of his career. Did you say 56? Yeah, there's no number 56 on Dallas. Maybe he meant 26. I don't know. First and 10 at the 48-yard line. Tampa Bay 14-9, 2.15 to go as James Owens slides into Dallas territory at the 49 and Don Smerick, who's in playing in place of the injured John Dutton makes the tackle. We have had no substitutions in the Dallas secondary except of course when they've gone with Fellows, Klinkscale and Monty Hunter who himself has gotten hurt in this game. Pittsburgh leading Houston second quarter. Green Bay 2-0 leading Minnesota 19-7. Pack picking up where they left off. At the 49, second and seven. Fumble. Tampa Bay recovers. So Doug Williams still having problem with that exchange. I don't understand the problem there. Steve Wilson's been around a long time. Uh, Doug had trouble in the rain in Tampa, but it's a nice day out there. He might be pulling too soon or Williams is putting against his leg, but anyway, there's been two fumbles today. Those are automatic things that shouldn't happen. I don't think it's raining. No, it's not raining. So there's no excuse for it today. <laughs> Third and 10 now at the 48. Williams is 16 for 26 for 188 yards. Three wide receivers. Terrific rush, and Anthony Dickerson on the blitz, and Williams had no chance. I talked to Gene Stallings before the game, and if I was uh, on either side of the uh, line of scrimmage, Gene is the defensive backfield for the uh, coach for the Cowboys. I'd blitz today. I'd really blitz because pass protection is tough anyway, and once you have to worry about blitzing, and this is one of the few blitzes Dallas has had, and no one picks him up. There's a mistake at the line of scrimmage. The, they doubled uh, the man in the middle that time with uh, Yarno and Steve Wilson and let Dickerson run free, and pass coordination is really tough anyway, but this is the area with the strike that could be hurt. Larry Swider will punt, and Ron Fellows is deep for Dallas. And I'm curious as to which players may be the most fatigued as we move into the fourth quarter of the game. An outstanding kick by Larry Swider. He got it inside the 15. He got it to the 13. So Dallas will take over, leading 14 to 9. After that 39-yard punt, no return. Cool, calm, and collected John McKay. Boy, he shook up over there, isn't he? A couple of defensive replacements in the front three for Tampa Bay. Booker Reese has replaced Stalls at left end, number 66, and Brad White, number 90, is in for Logan at nose tackle. So let's see how the reserves do for Tampa Bay here. First and 10, Dallas on their own 13 with under a minute to play in the third quarter. Dorsett gets to the 16-yard line. The last two times Dallas has had the ball, they have gone a long way. 80 yards and six for a touchdown. 77 yards, 13 plays for a touchdown. Green Bay piling it on Minnesota 26 to seven right here in the third quarter. 
And the Jets having a field day against Frank Cushion, the Baltimore Colts. Second down, seven. This drive started from the 13. Danny White, 21 yard line. It's like they're having a long talk in there. Dorsett and Cecil Johnson, who has one of the outstanding personalities and is a kind of a devil may care attitude. And there's the gun. That's the end of the third quarter here at Texas Stadium in Irving with the score, the Dallas Cowboys 14, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 9. I'll just, I'll just go into it. Next week in the National Football League, these games, Green Bay winning today against the Jets who are winning. Philadelphia, Washington. That could be an interesting affair, Roger. That'll be a real good one right there. Of course, Philadelphia's in a dogfight with Cincinnati today. Washington's undefeated, so that's a big one. San Francisco is playing next against St. Louis. Most of you will see the second game of the doubleheader, and it'll be the 49ers against the New Orleans Saints, along with St. Louis, Atlanta, as you mentioned. 12.30 Eastern, and it all starts with the NFL today. There's a guy, John McKay, right there. He's got a great sense of humor. He mentioned... Uh, Hey, this team might be better off. We haven't had much time to screw them up this week, and I don't know if that has anything to do with the day, but they're playing pretty darn good. Third and one for the Cowboys on their 22 as we start the fourth quarter. Dick Stockton and Rogers in motion is Doug Cosby, and the flip to Ron Springs. He has close to a first down. Dave Stalls makes the tackle. Danny White. Played for Frank Cush at Arizona State and actually went to Arizona State on a baseball scholarship and was drafted by four major league teams. Well, Danny can do it all, though, Dick. I tell you, he's a, he's a great all-around athlete, and you need an athlete in that position as far as getting away from the, the uh, rush of the lineman, making the big play, and he can do it. He's a leader on the football team and just a uh, very smart quarterback also and a, and a big play guy. And you need big plays to win football games. You saw the signal illegal procedure or backfield in motion against the Cowboys. And they'll mark it off. I didn't see the penalty. The flag was hidden over there, but Tampa was determining if it was going to be a first down or not, if they, they would have taken the penalty. And the referee said they had it by an inch, so Tampa Bay decided to take the penalty. Chuck Heverling will tell us. Illegal motion, number 84, lined up at end and went in motion from the line of scrimmage. Third down. Doug Cosby. You can't do that. You got to shift back a step and then go in motion, and he went direct, which is uh, illegal. Tie score. Houston has come back to tie Pittsburgh. This is a big defensive play for Tampa Bay. Third and six. John Holt, number 21, in is the nickel back for the Bucks. Ball at the 17. Right with time. Knocked away and a fine play by Hugh Green. What a play by Hugh Green, who knocked away that pass. We saw him as a blitzer before on the pass intended for Ron Spring. Well, Danny White picked the, uh, the wrong guy man-to-man -man that time. Hugh Green is an excellent linebacker. Blitzer, also he's a great tackler, but he can play man-to-man -man coverage. And here he is, he's playing man-to-man. -man. He's got Springs all the way across the backfield and uh, into the secondary, and he knocks the ball down right here. What extension by Hugh Green. Terrific play by Hugh. And now Danny White will punt in the sunshine from his two-yard line. There's Hugh Green, second year from Pitt. John Holt is standing at the 45. And a good punt. Holt fumbles and wisely goes out of bounds with it, and I think he knocked another official down. <laughs> Rod Hill made the stop. And we're going to take a break right now. Tampa Bay will have good field position and we'll return to Texas Stadium after this word from your local station. We have the attendance figures for you that they sold for this game 63,017 tickets. 63,017, the attendance 49,578. There were 13,439 no-shows today.
pretty significant no shows it's a beautiful day today too in Dallas. Tampa Bay with the best position since the first quarter interception by Cedric Brown and here's James Owens and fumble Dallas Bob Brimming They're going to referee might mark him down right there. He's pointing to the ground, and of course, that must be he's down. And I think you're right. I think they blew it dead. Well, the Dallas fans are booing right now. They might have a legitimate gripe. Here's Owens breaking through the line. I, gee, I tell you, I don't understand that one at all. Michael that is, Downs. That has got to be that. Somebody, uh, the referee must have uh, been looking at a uh, different direction. That was a terrible call right there. Michael Downs forced the fumble. Brunig recovered. As you can see, it was a clean fumble. The crowd, the crowd's still booing. Second and three for Tampa Bay. Wilder has a first down at the four-yard line. James Wilder and the tackle made by Guy Brown and Everson Walls. So the Tampa Bay Bucks got a big break there on that call because it looked break. as if Without question, and this is not just a simple matter of angle, that that ball was stripped away from Owens by Michael Downs. First and 10 at the 43 of Dallas. The crowd still doesn't like it. Look at the power by Wilder as he picks up nearly nine yards, and there are flags all over the place. Downs made the tackle, and penalties fly. Probably against Dallas again. There weren't any orange jerseys around the runner, so that's right. Face mask. Now you're really going to hear the crowd. Someone missed it on the the bump. I, of course, the crowd still reacting. I even hear the no shows. <laughs> I tell you, they. Uh, I don't know what happened on that, but somebody just completely Face blew mask, the. Five yards on a defense on a tackle. First down. The fumble. So they're still mad at the referees, but that. Uh, a chance to see the face mask again right here. Watch Wilder's head there. That's how you can tell. And a lot of times the referees, is, if they see the head pulled down too fast, right there, see it? Good call. Well, the officials maybe need time to get up to par as well. James Owens trying to hold on to the ball, getting to the 25 on first and 10 for Tampa Bay. It's 14 to 9. The Cowboys leading Tampa Bay. Want to remind you, next Saturday, NCAA basketball is back on CBS with quite a matchup. Dean Smith's defending NCAA champion North Carolina Tar Heels take on the Missouri Tigers, who have won the Big A title the last three years. Gary Bender, Billy Packer will be courtside at the Checker Dome to bring you all the action next Saturday. Jimmy Giles has been a little bit silent today, except for the one big catch. Second and seven at the 27th for the Bucks. Quick toss low but caught by Gordon Jones. Short of a first down by maybe a yard and a half. Everson Walls was there for the stop. Gordon Jones also from the University of Pittsburgh, as many of the Tampa Bay Bucks are. He was injured last year, led Tampa Bay receivers two years ago. See, that's a good play there, Dick. You wonder, say, why doesn't Dallas do something about that play? The way you do it, you bring the cornerbacks up, the safeties back, but when you do that, You've got to now force with your safeties and running situations. Dallas would rather force with their linebackers, so they still give them that short pass. Third and one at the 21. Owens, short, did not make it. James Owens did not make believe. We'll have to wait for a measurement. But from our vantage point, I think he was stopped. Well, Doug Williams is saying they're short about a half a foot. They're have to, they'll have to go for it here. It is fourth down at the 21. The Tampa Bay Bucks are going to send in the play with Theo Bell. John McKay is going for it on fourth down, trailing 14 to 9 with a lot of time remaining, 12.02. And I think this call could go either way. This could be a controversial call. Well, uh, I would say uh, it could be controversial, but I think the decision is a good one right here with fourth and one. They need to get something besides a field goal. Williams on a reverse, tight end Giles, and I think he has it. Well, now, now I would say it was controversial with that play right yeah. there. 
That was any time you give Dallas a chance or any team to penetrate on short yardage, it's controversial, and they had a chance to penetrate. Roger, why in the first game back, and they may not have Look, it. The referees are marking that ball. Roger, why in the first game back you would go for a, a complex play like that, gambling on fourth down, where, you, where mistakes could happen more than if you go off tackle? Well, I guess they figured on the play before that they were stopped so cold on a basic play that they were going to take a chance. Big measurement here. But that official marked that ball back a little bit. Now, that is a, that's called a game of inches right there and a prime <laughs> example of a... <laughs> but, you know, when he hit down, his body was well beyond the 20-yard yeah. line, but that official marked that ball back an inch, and it made it close. John McKay has got one more gray hair over there on that left side underneath that uh, fishing cap. He said, I shouldn't be smoking dollar cigars with my team the way I'm coaching them. I should be smoking 10 centers. First and 10 at the 20 for Tampa Bay. A lot of time remaining here in the quarter. And James Owens finds a hole, gets inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. And now we have an NFL Today update. Let's switch to Brent Musburger in New York. Brent, what do you got? Dick, I've got one more gray hair from Monty Clark of the Lions. Here's Jim McMahon of the Bears back in the shotgun. It'll be a high snap. He pulls it down. Emory Moorhead, formerly of the Giants, will work his way free in the back of the end zone. And Chicago now has gone ahead of Detroit. Back to Dick Stockton and Roger Staubach. Wow, that's a wild game. The, the Chicago Bears leading Detroit. Second and three right here for Tampa Bay with 10.40 remaining in the fourth quarter. Quick hitch pass. To Kevin House can't get away from Everson Walls. He would have been gone if he had. Well, that's been a big play for him today. They've hit that thing probably every time they've thrown it out there and probably averaged six or seven yards per catch. And, uh, of course, if House just makes the move one way or the other, he can break it all the way in a play like that. Doug Williams told us to work on Everson Walls and Dennis Thurman because Walls is a gambling type, and they thought maybe they could spring House. Also, they, both these cornerbacks, Walls and Thurman, give the receivers a lot of room. And also the pass protection, they were worried about it, so they've hit the short passes. First and goal at the nine for Tampa Bay, trailing. Wilder stumbles forward and gets to about the six-yard line. Well, here's Tampa has been as good as a team could be under any kind of circumstances between the 10-yard lines today. It's inside this 10 where they've had trouble. Uh, they've moved the ball better than Dallas overall during the day. But this is the critical area for Tampa. They've fallen short three times. This is their fourth shot down there. Bob Bruning and Michael Downs made the tackle. Wilder has gained 67 yards on 12 carries today. Second and goal at the six. Williams, pass. Theo Bell dropped the pass and covering on the play was Dennis Thurman, but Bell had it. Well, he, he went into the sun, but uh, he can't make an excuse with the sun because the sun was coming to his back. Williams drilled the ball out there. Theo Bell made a great adjustment there. Thurman was on him very well, but uh, Bell adjusted it quite uh, naturally and with instincts, but just dropped the football. So it's third and goal at the six. Jones, Carter, and House, three wide receivers in there for Tampa Bay. Blitz. Here comes the blitz, and the pass is thrown to nobody. It'll be fourth down. Doug Williams is unhappy. He's yelling at the uh, referee. He thought Giles was held up. He was trying to get the ball to Giles. And Injured Dallas player. Here, Williams sees the blitz right now, and he's got Giles. He wants more time, and he has to get rid of it quickly, and he's saying that maybe Giles was held up, but he threw the ball away. Anthony Dickerson is the injured Dallas Cowboy. We'll take a break now. Fourth down when we come back. The story here with Dallas leading 14-9 is Tampa Bay's inability to get into the end zone, and Bill Capice, who has kicked three field goals, will try to make it four for four. A 24-yard attempt right here with Larry Swider doing the holding. It's no good. Off to the right. And the Bucks come up empty. Well, Tampa Bay has had a lot of 
conditions to knock the wind out of their sails. This is another one. Dallas still leads. Dick Stockton and Roger Staubach here at Texas Stadium in Irving with the Cowboys leading the Bucks 14 to 9. Bill Capice has kicked three field goals, just missed that one, but the story is Tampa Bay's inability when they are inside deep Dallas territory to go on and score. It's hurt them today. First and 10 Dallas at the 20 yard line. In motion is Drew Pearson. And the first back through is Springs who picks up two or three yards off left tackle. Jeff Davis makes the tackle. There's an interesting player here who's thought upon by John McKay to be a, a real Davis, fifth round draft choice, number 58 for Tampa Bay out of Clemson. All-American was available on the fifth round. Tampa Bay was surprised at that. Herschel Walker said he was the hardest hitter he faced in college. Jeff Davis scored the first time he touched the ball in preseason on an interception. John McKay said only Jeff Davis and Red Grange had done that. Players want to know who Red Grange was. <laughs> Cutting back, and Tony Dorsett on a play that did not work, and Mark Cotney, who is in for Neil Colsey, at strong safety made a fine play. Atlanta in the fourth quarter leading the LA Rams. Atlanta playing St. Louis next week. New Orleans now a touchdown ahead of Kansas City. The Saints go against the 49ers on CBS next week. Miami over Buffalo 9-7. They're in the fourth quarter of that defensive struggle. And Cleveland over New England 7-0. The Browns will have to play the Cowboys Thanksgiving Day. Over Philadelphia 18-0. Eagles and Skins go out at Sunday in the nation's capital. Third and 15 in the spread for Dallas. It's a blitz. One of the few times today. It's a blitz. And Randy White is down at the three. Well, I'd say I'd give him a lot more blitz today, both sides. But they, it's worked the few times it's been seen. And Mark Cotney made a play right before this, like he was in Dallas's huddle, and made a big, big trap back there on the uh, reverse. And another big play here. For Dave Stalls and Leroy Selman pinching in on the 3-4. See, with the blitz now, you got your guards and your center have to come off on those blitzes. It gives, gives guys like Stalls the ability to, to break free on single blocks and put the pressure on the quarterback, and Stalls rope him to the ground. His Actu second trap of the day. Actually, as you look at Stalls, that's four sacks for the team for 50 yards in losses. Danny White at the back of the end zone. Holt should have good field position, but this is a punt by Danny White. And Holt gets into Dallas territory at the 49, where Danny Spradlin from Tennessee and a hard hitter makes the tackle. So Danny White with a booming 56-yard punt, and it'll be Tampa Bay, first and 10 when we come back. Now we've seen uh, Tampa Bay, they've been successful moving the football down the field with those short hook patterns. If I had to guess, and you, just, you and I were just talking about it, this would be the time to run one of those hook and goes and see if they can hit the big play. And if they go, they can get a touchdown in a hurry. First and 10 for Tampa Bay at the Dallas 49. 7.03 remaining in the fourth quarter. Williams with time up the middle finds Jimmy Giles. Jimmy Giles and has it about nine yards, maybe very close to a first down. Bob Rooney and Guy Brown, the linebackers make on Jimmy Giles. Third catch of the day for Jimmy. Hey, you know, uh, Doug Williams did a good job that time, Dick. He had, he was going to the wide receivers. The cornerbacks came up to take away anything short. Safety's back. Giles found the open middle. And uh, Williams really went off to a secondary receiver that time. Second and one. Good opportunity here for Doug Williams. Plays it conservatively and gets the first down as James Owens goes up the middle. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and Roger, you have to say without question that they have really outplayed Dallas on the whole both ways today. All they have, they've been in uh, scoring position. That last, of course, missed field goal even is bigger right now because they have a chance, another 10 yards, to even get into a uh, go-ahead situation with another field goal. Of course, they'd like to score. They just can't get in, in the end zone. But that last field goal miss, which was a chip shot, looms big right now. Scores of other games. First and 10 at the 37 of the Cowboys. Giles, the tight end move. Let's see if he was drawn off. We have not had many of those kinds of penalties today. 
that's surprising. No, it hasn't been, uh, other than some delay of the games, there hasn't been the offsides, the, the kind of mechanics that you, th you think would be a problem here. But I think there's some very tired legs out there right now, and the pass rush from Dallas is a big factor normally in the fourth quarter. Today it might not be. Conditioning may be the most important aspect of this game at this point. Now, Tom Landry said he Encroachment, felt... Encroachment, offense number 88, first down. Fatigue would set in in the second half and especially the fourth quarter. And the game would be won and lost in the fourth quarter. So his prediction is pretty good so far. This game is up for grabs right now. Team that can plug away at the finish will win it. That's what Tom Landry said Friday. First and 15 and going deep. House, the intended receiver. And covered by Everson Walls on the play. So Williams try to go and get six on one shot. It'll be second and 15 now for Tampa Bay. Gordon Jones coming in with the play. Carter also in there. And Theo Bell goes out. I've noticed something. Tampa Bay, when they're in that setback formation, the eye formation, they have a tendency to go to the wide receivers. When they're in a split backfield, they go to the tight end. So Dallas seems to be defense in that, that eye formation, making sure those receivers don't get deep. Second and 15 at the 42-yard line. And Gerald Carter in motion for the Bucks. Wilder. Wilder can't get by Dickerson, who was injured before. Anthony Dickerson with a fine play. He went to SMU, and of course, the Mustang pit at the Cotton Bowl, New Year's Day on CBS. It's been a good play for Tampa today, the swing out of the backfield, but yeah, you'd like to work the swing against the zone and not a man-to-man. -man. Dickerson had him man-to-man. -man. He followed him from all the way from one side of the field to the other and uh, made a good play. Guy Brown started the game, but Dickerson has played mostly at that right linebacker position. Tampa Bay, 7 of 15 on third down conversions. Third and 11. Watch Jimmy Giles. Carter in motion. Here comes the blitz and click score. Dexter Klinkscale, second year free agent rookie from South Carolina State with a lot of talent. No one picked him up. Well, they've saved the uh, blitz both teams for the second half and it's hurt both teams. Dallas got trapped back there. Danny White back at the two yard line and here's Clink Scale. Here he comes untouched. One picked him up and you have to have a hot receiver on a, on a play like that. A quick down and in or something to get rid of the ball fast and it put uh, Tampa Bay back in tough position right now. Swider. Good high kick. Angling for the sidelines. And he's got it. He's got it inside the one. What a punt by Larry Swider. What a punt by Larry Swider. <laughs> he couldn't ask for anything more there, could you? He couldn't have, no. he couldn't have placed it out of bounds. He put it on the half yard line. Should have been on the quarter yard line. Well, Dallas only has to go 99 and a half yards now. The Dallas Cowboys, who have not started any drive, their own 29 yard line, have it on the one half yard line. Look where the ball is. 426 remaining in the fourth quarter. Cowboys lead 14 to 9. And a keeper. And let's see if Danny White got out of the end zone. And apparently he did, but not by much. Leroy Selman made the play. What kind of a play is this, Roger? Here's where uh, Dallas likes to, uh, you know, an inside handoff right there is a quarterback sneak just to maybe get a yard or two, but an, an inside handoff with a back out in like a shoot route or out in the flat where you can maybe suck that linebacker in for just a tad and then hit the play out in the flat. There's Mark Cotney who made the key play before on defense, covering from knee surgery, missed all of last year, and he's in for Colsey and has been at strong safety. 343 remaining, second and 10. a big one for the Cowboys, Dorsett. He is short of a first down by about a yard, but he gets him out of deep trouble. Good blocks by the guards, Richards and Peterson. Now that was right up the middle there. You got Rafferty and Howard Richards, number 70, will come into your picture here in a second with Dorsett just booming right up the middle. That's a big play right there. They took Logan, knocked him to the side, and 
just worked on those inside linebackers also. We get a chance here. Here's Dorsett, elite block by Springs at the outside, but there's 65 also. Kurt Peterson pulling around the center. Rafferty 64 blocks to the right, and Dorsett with his explosiveness gets into that close to first down range. Third and one, and a first down. Tony Dorsett, I want to correct something earlier. I said he went to Aliquippa High School. He went to Hopewell High School, which happens to be in Aliquippa. Detroit and Chicago as the Lions tie up the Bears in a wild game in Chicago, 17 to 17. And Thanksgiving Day, the Lions, who are 2 and 0, pending the outcome of that game, go against the New York Giants. Starts at noon with the NFL today on CBS. So we should have an incredible holiday weekend of pro football. We got college basketball coming up and a full slate of games next week. And don't forget, we have a second game of this doubleheader. Here is Tony Dorsett looking for the opening. Has it? to the 21, getting the Cowboys out of trouble here, Roger, in the waning moments of this game. Well, that's when your running game really comes in handy. Dallas has got a good balance of running and passing, and they've got themselves at least out of trouble here temporarily with a couple of runs by Tony Dorsett. Tampa Bay, I think call the timeout, but that's unnecessary because we have the two-minute warning. That's what the officials had indicated. So the two minute warning here at Texas Stadium with 14 to nine and they have the ball. Time remaining and I think they charged a timeout to Tampa Bay. There are 202 showing so that was not the two minute warning. The clock had run down to two minutes but I think Tampa Bay called timeout prior to that. So 202 show on the clock, and I think that was a charged Tampa Bay timeout. So the Bucks have two more timeouts remaining, trailing 14 to nine. Dallas has a second and two on their own 21 yard line. In the game that has to be awfully frustrating for the Tampa Bay ball club, after losing 38 nothing in the playoffs last year, coming in and outplaying the Dallas Cowboys through most of the ball game, but not being able to get the touchdown. Yet. Second and two. Ron Springs will be short of a first down. It'll be third down, and Leroy Selman came in to make the play. New Orleans defeats Kansas City 27-17, so the Saints are two and one on the year, and they'll go against the San Francisco 49ers at Candlestick Park. Next week, you'll see it on CBS. New England, Cleveland tied 7-7 in the fourth quarter. Browns have to travel to Dallas Thanksgiving Day. We are in the two-minute warning right now with the clock showing 158. We wanted to remind you about the holiday coming up on CBS Sports. Anything you want on your menu, professional football, College football or college basketball, we have it for you. You'll see two of college football's oldest and most intense on Friday, the Oklahoma Sooners. Visit the Nebraska Cornhuskers in a game that will determine the Big A champion and the host of the Orange Bowl. And then on Saturday, Notre Dame will be trying to defeat Southern Cal at the Coliseum in Los Angeles for the first time since 1966. You couldn't ask for a better pair of games than these two. And then Thanksgiving Day on CBS, and not a bad item the Giants against the Detroit Lions. Begins with the NFL today at 12 noon. And coming up next, the 49ers looking for their first win of the year against the Cardinals. Some of you will see the Washington Redskins at 2-0 against the winless New York Giants. I don't think John McKay can complain much about how his team has performed today. They just haven't gone over the hump when they needed it. By the way, Roger Staubach, because this game appears to be running a little short has gone down to the field for some post-game interviews that you will hear. Third and one at the 22 for the Cowboys. Dorsett doesn't have it. And Tampa Bay holds. Leroy Selman for the second successive play makes the key stop. And it'll be fourth down. Fourth down and two or a long one and a half. Norris Thomas also in on the play. So the Bucks will get their chance again. They need a touchdown to win this game. 
Capice had missed a field goal earlier, which could have brought Tampa Bay to within a field goal of winning the game, but he missed. White will punt. His last kick was a boomer, 56 yards. And Danny will be kicking from the six yard line. Holt and Theo Bell are deep and Bell at the 29. Bell going outside and he's ridden out of bounds by Steve Wright for the Cowboys. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers following that 51 yard punt and 13 yard return We'll have it first and 10 at the 43-yard line, their own 43, with 115 remaining in the fourth quarter, and the Bucks with two more timeouts. Doug Williams has had a sharp day today. He's got Kevin House split to the left. In motion, Gerald Carter, three wide receivers. Williams up the middle, it's caught, and a first down. Gerald Carter, who was in motion, found the open seam and a first down for Tampa Bay at the front line of Dallas, lining up without a huddle. One minute to go. They still have two timeouts remaining. Williams under pressure, and he's going to, no, they're going to call him, I think. An official is coming up and signaling grounding, but no flag has been thrown. Anthony Dickerson got around him. And the crowd wants grounding. They're not going to get it. And I'm surprised. Watch 51 Dickerson come in on Williams. Now you have to credit the Dallas secondary for covering the receivers. Now watch Dickerson come in. Looked like it was intentional grounding. 51 seconds to go, second and 10. Tampa Bay at the 46 in motion, Gerald Carter. 14 to nine, Dallas. And going up top, and the pass intercepted by Everson Walls. And now they say it was not an interception, that Walls did not have control. And Butch Johnson is pleading the Cowboys case. Pass was intended for Kevin House. Everson Walls appeared to have intercepted but didn't have control. Here it is. The boos have been more to the officials and to the Dallas Cowboys today on the strike return. Walls cuts in front on the short pass. You can't tell from this angle, and I have to say the official had the perfect view. You can't tell from our view. Third and 10 for Tampa Bay with 45 seconds to go. They need a touchdown. Incomplete. Harvey Martin storming in from right defensive end. And it'll be fourth down for Tampa Bay on their last chance now. They're on their own 46. The clock shows 39 seconds remaining. And Harvey Martin, that was an incomplete pass, but Martin as showing good legs late in this game when a lot of others have to be tiring. Timeout story. Roger Staubach down on the field to talk to some of the winning players if we have time, and we should. It's fourth down. This is it for Tampa Bay. Six defensive backs for the Cowboys. Three wide receivers for the Bucks. Gerald Carter in motion. Williams has time, his pass caught by Gerald Carter in a first down at the 31 yard line. A play, Williams to Carter. Dennis Thurman covering on the play and the clock stops with 32 seconds to go. And presumably a timeout called for by Tampa Bay, we'll check. Here it is now. Good protection by the offensive line, but the catch made it. A leaping catch by Gerald Carter in his third year from Texas A&M. And that was a Tampa Bay timeout. They have one remaining. So Gerald Carter, who 
limited in his play last year, seeing more action this time. Ninth round draft choice. That's Williams' work today. Far cry from that 38 nothing playoff route last year here at Texas Stadium. 32 seconds to go. First and 10, Tampa Bay at the 31. The Jets defeated Baltimore. Soundly 37 to nothing this afternoon. Atlanta widening it up against the Rams, 34-17. Falcons go against the Cardinals next week. The Steelers break the tie and lead Houston 17 to 10 in the fourth. Tom Landry needs three wins for 200 regular season triumphs. The Bucks have to be thinking of the critical plays, two of them, the missed 24 yard field goal by Capice earlier this period and the timeout called two seconds before the two minute warning. Carter in motion. Going up top, incomplete for Kevin House and Everson Walls defending on the play. So Williams trying to go to his favorite receiver, Kevin House, who was third in yardage last year in the NFC, and it's second and 10. 26 seconds show on the clock. While no one an could really anticipate anything today, no one knew what to expect. I think this kind of game was unexpected. Most observers felt a team like the Dallas Cowboys could come in in the first game back after a 57-day layoff and just dominate Tampa Bay. It hasn't been that way at all. Second and 10. Doug Williams going for House. Out of the end zone, incomplete. Kevin House was out of the end zone. And the Tampa Bay Bucks are forlorn on a well-executed hookup from Williams to House. Let's see how close it was for Kevin. Ron Fellows was beaten on the play. House had his left foot on the line. His left foot was on the white, and so both feet were out. Both feet were out, and it wasn't that close. The official was right there to see it. Third and 10 now, 20 seconds showing. The Falcons defeated the Rams, 34 to 17. Tampa Bay 0-2, Dallas 1-1. Williams going for Giles, and it's knocked away by Dexter Klinkscale. Fourth down. He was out all of last year with a torn Achilles tendon, but they have a lot of promise for Dexter Klinkscale from South Carolina State, and it's fourth and 10, and once again, the Bucks are up against it. Here's the finish of that play again. A loft pass to Giles. He was well covered, and number 47 there with the right hand, Klinkscale, knocked the ball away. Everson Walls was also defending. So it'll be fourth and 10 for Tampa Bay. Bucks still have one timeout. They need a touchdown to win. Hey, what was the call? What was, the call? was there a penalty marker down? No, I did not see a flag called. 14 seconds show. Let's see what Chuck Heberling said. Pass interference, offense, number 84, refuse. Fourth down. That was on Gordon Jones, and that might have been away from the play. It was, it, but it couldn't have been far away from the play. That was Giles, who was the intended receiver on that play. They called it on Gordon Jones. Anyway, it's fourth down, and this could be it. Tampa Bay converted a fourth down before. 14 seconds to go. Williams up the middle. It's caught. No, oh, it's... A fumble. Dallas recovers. Jimmy Giles caught it. He fumbled it. And Michael Downs recovers it for Dallas on the three-yard line. Five seconds to go.
Jimmy Giles had the ball. On the fourth and 10 play, Giles makes the catch. And he drops it when Monty Hunter hit him. And it was recovered by Michael Downs on the three yard line and frustration. Etched on Jimmy Giles, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who have done everything you could possibly do but get in and the touchdown they need to win. And a rough return it is for them. Five seconds to go. And that'll do it. Dallas Cowboys hold on to win. 14 to nine. Jimmy Giles can only shake his head. But Tampa Bay gave the Cowboys all they could handle this afternoon. Final score, Dallas 14, Tampa Bay 9 here at Texas Stadium. With 13,000 no-shows. And a crowd that was stunned, not because of the brand of play they saw, but because of the way the Tampa Bay Bucks play their Dallas Cowboys.